Oh, oh, there we are. We're live on YouTube. Ooh. Welcome. I want to watch. Top Haven. Can I watch episode it? 21? 21. Wow. Yeah. Oh, we can drink now. Wow. We, we can, can drink, drink now. We can drink. The episode is legal, guys. Is We've legal. made it. <laughs> we have it's made it to the legal age of podcasting. If only it worked that way. <laughs> <laughs> when you're growing up, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. just have to podcast about drinks 21 times, and then I yeah, can drink. And then you're in. It's fine. That's I don't see anything wrong with that at all. I mean, Not at all. The youth of the day really need the incentive to get out there and make a name for themselves. And what better incentive than copious amounts of alcohol in return for making 21 articles of media? Yeah, <laughs> that's the payoff. 21 sure. articles of media equals. <laughs> I can drink. <laughs> it would really suck as if, uh, like, alcohol is against terms of service or anything. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not I- against terms of service. There are too many alcohol podcasters. There are, right? Like, people and drink. The tipsy bartender shows. stuff. Yeah. yeah, tipsy bartender. You have the Whiskey Tribe. You have, mm-hmm. you know, Kevin Koss doing cocktail time. You you have Anders Ericsson doing cocktail. Like, People you you even have how to drink now with forever. Greg. Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be Coke. It's got to be Coke. Did you gotta say it's got to be Coke? Now, I do think <laughs> that they, they limit who it gets pushed out to. Dude. Mm. But. Dude, I saw this great thing where this lady was like, yeah, so I learned that I got ADHD the other day because I was with my friends at, at a club and uh, we did cocaine. And for the first time in my life, I felt calm. And they were all Bro. like, "Oh, let's start this business and let's do this, and and we're gonna we're gonna take off with this website, and we're gonna do amazing things." And she's like, "I'm so calm right now. I think I'm gonna take a nap," <laughs> <laughs> which and makes then, me feel as if she was an absolute crazy person off of yeah. stuff. Has it went be. and started the Silk Road right after on the deep web. <laughs> oh my god, she has an immunity, so she must. The spice yeah. must flow. Yes, 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 yes. We've hit our quota for what mental health awareness month for dudes. Now that we brought up ADHD, now we can for sure feel good for about sure. ourselves. So, <laughs> little story before we get into this. My bad. Um, oh, and and actually, before we get too mm-hmm. far, just because I'm a little worried. Oh, I don't see Anthony's mic lighting up anymore in Riverside. I hear can you hear me? Clear. I I hear you yeah. loud and clear. I see it lighting up. You do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna just say that's a bug on my end and hope for the best. Hope so, yeah. If not, I definitely know that you can be heard on the, the YouTube stream. stream at least. And can you worst case scenario, we'll that? pull it from there. Oh God. <laughs> so <laughs> all right. <laughs> but but uh store little story. Uh yeah. so Anthony told us last week, I think it was last week, that it was men- uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. Yeah. I mistakenly thought it was men's mental health. No, no, you, <laughs> it, no you're right. You're right. It is men's mental health it's, awareness? It's at, uh, apparently, remember, I made a joke because it's, it's actually Men's Health Month. And that was a thing made by like one of the presidents uh, back in the day. Uh, yeah. And it's because it's like the statistics of men dying compared to women is bad and it's like we need to raise awareness for men's health because like most men like one in two men are dying of like a heart attack or cancer or something like that and now like uh my wife saw a poster at work that said like men's men's health and mental health too or or, (laughs) and that includes mental health so they're trying to like push the pivot it over the, the the mental aspect of it for because sure. that's probably the key to men- men's health, to be frank. <laughs> yeah. Solving the yeah. the anger is the only way the we anger can be repository. thing. Yeah. Yeah, not great. No. But yeah, I mistakenly thought it was only uh, men's mental health. Now I know that it possibly is. But yeah. I was telling my coworkers, I was like, yeah, it's men's mental health. And I'm doing absolutely terrible at it right now <laughs> oh, no. oh no well you are only halfway done with the month so Shut we up. we have some pickup time no 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 it means it can get better you could continue on to greatness by the end of the month turn it around 
Okay, guys, I'll try. <laughs> Good luck. I'll, uh, try. I'll really try it out here, guys. Oh, oh we got how, you. Wh- how was your week, Anthony? Oh, y'all want me to start? <laughs> uh, well, I can start. I mean, mine's no, short. I got this. I got this. Okay, I believe. Um, so let's see. Where do I even start? You we said it was short. You said why do we? Where do I even start? And then said I, it was short because I right have before. like a list here, but then I was like, I should go chronologically so that I don't need the list. I don't know. Why Last we week, I order? I didn't tell y'all about something because I was worried about the outcome, and now the outcome has been good, so y'all can know. Okay. Um. Y'all may be aware that occasionally one of my dogs will bring a turtle out of the farm, out of the meadow, and be like, look what I got. Can we eat it? And we're like, no. And turtles are pretty strong, so they almost always just go on. They don't get hurt. This time, they found a small turtle, a little little tiny like three-inch diameter turtle, and there was blood, there were cracks everywhere, there was puncture holes on the top cracks through the bottom i when i saw that i was like this is this is really bad i need I'm, am i gonna have to find out how to kill a turtle like i because like you know like putting it out of its misery did a bunch of research and apparently turtles are very resilient uh and if you run what a freaking thought yeah <laughs> yeah and apparently if you see a turtle that was like run over in the in the road stop because they will they can take like a week to die Yes. And so for us, it's been a a week and a day or two. Uh, Eventually, we learned that you can use, um, what is it called? Electrical tape on the top of their shell and cover the wounds. That'll help the, the shell develop more shell to keep them sealed off and heal. And then on the bottom you actually use, and you have to be very careful not to touch their internal organs and skin and stuff, but you can use super glue. And if it's really bad, you can put tape on and then super glue and you can tape, super you can glue, you can glue the bottom, their belly. Yeah. Cause so like in our case, there was such a big crack that Ashley was very worried about it. So she, we taped it, but we made sure, but then when we made sure we, taped it then put glue around all the tape because they're going to be walking and scraping and scraping the tape's just going to come off Mm, so the glue is a a protective barrier yeah and so today uh the turtle was put back out in its little um we used a little flower pot a little tiny flower pot to create its little uh like hole its little shelter within the shelter that it was spending most of its time in and eventually it left so it has survived a very long week we're not even sure if it really ate that was a lot of work a lot of effort and very like just worrying constantly being like why isn't it moving as much mm-hmm. is it die? is it did, did it die did, did it die last night and like Aww. we would put it in the greenhouse at night so that it would be warm enough but then we'd have to take it out of the greenhouse during the day because it'd be too hot and then it would like have a heat stroke and die so it's just like it was a lot. Jeez. So much stuff. Um, yeah, so that was crazy. fun. Yeah. And then, yeah, this past weekend was pretty, pretty much the rest of it. it. was a lot of farming, which was great. We did a lot of fence tearing down and fence putting up because the previous owners are a little cuckoo when it comes to fencing because cuckoo, I've never cuckoo. seen... Yeah. I've never... It's just... It's like, you know, if you got like zip ties, if you have zip ties, there's, yeah. there's these fencing. I can't remember what it's called, but it, some people call it hog wire, but it's just a wire fence where there's a bunch of squares and you can cut them and then you can like put them together by bending the wires around each other. Well, they did that like all over the place, like in an insane excessive amount. It was just, it was, it was so it was crazy. And at one point there was like, a stretch of barbed wire within the fence. Like there was fence with barbed wire in it, which is not something that people are supposed to do. Cause why would you do that? Yeah. And, and it just, you know, scratches your arm open and that's fun. Ugh. So, Speaking but experience. we finally finished the putting it all together. And then we get, we get the text saying, okay, meet us at the farm. 
in like 30 minutes. We're, we're doing this. And so we go and we load up a bull and a baldy. Baldy's here with us now. And the bull needed to be transported to a new pasture with some new new girls, right? And girls. First off, you know, it was fun trying to separate them all because there was a bull, Baldy, who's a little one year old that looks like a six month old because she's been getting bullied. So now that she's with us, there's no one to bully her. And so she can finally eat and grow properly because she's tiny. Um, and so we had Baldy, the bull, and th- like three other big girls in this little small area. And we were trying to like get them separated so that we can get the two in the trailer, but the rest of them needed to move on, right? And so that was a fun little adventure. I opened the gate to let one out perfectly, finally, and then the other two miraculously go out right behind it. I was like, whoa, okay, we're done. Good job. Um, yeah, the pack animals, dude. One goes, yeah, follow. Yeah, it was just herd, fun. Sorry, herd mentality. <laughs> yeah, and so, but the crazy part was when we got to where the bull was being delivered, um, well... There was another bull there. Oh, shit. and that wasn't Paul's bull. And we we're like, okay. And then we we're talking to the bull while Paul's trying to call people. Like, are you a nice bull? Because he was like coming around checking things out. He had like a scratch on his stomach. He probably jumped a fence or something. Got scratched. Who knows? Um, the two bulls are like yelling at each other. They're like, just, like these Ooh. are my girls. And he's like, no, <laughs> these are my girls. And it's just like, okay. And eventually, Paul finds out that supposedly this bull's a nice bull. And they might push each other around a little bit, but they're going to be fine. They're, they're nice bulls. And these bulls don't have, like, huge horns where they're going to kill each other, you know? They mm-hmm. might just, like, bonk each other really hard. And you're gonna be like, ow, that hurt. Um, well, my father-in-law lets the bull out of the trailer. That bull jumped, like, eight feet in the air uh, and was high enough to kick my, like, 6'2 father-in-law in the face. So, luckily, his face wasn't too close. But it, like, wait, launched out of the trailer. Wait. Wait. <laughs> wait. <Yeah>. What? Wait. <laughs> you need to stop. <laughs> There's a flag on the play. Well, you know, rewind. <laughs> Sir. The, we're getting re- they're getting ready to let the bull out. Me and Ash are standing Which watching. Bull? The so, one that you want or the one you don't want? The the one that we don't want is just there out in the open, out in the just pasture with all the girls out. roaming around. And we're not about to get rid of him. He's just chilling. And then we've got Baldy who's coming to our place eventually. And we got the bull from my father-in-law's farm who's coming over to, to I guess, Paul's farm. Um, so you're getting so, two bulls. There's two bulls. There was only supposed to be one. Yeah. Yeah. You got Baldy. Who is we got bull. Baldy. We don't have a bull. You do not have a bull. Okay. So there were four stops on this on this Thank trip. You. Thank the you. first stop was father-in-law's farm. Okay? okay. At father-in-law's farm was Baldy, who was eventually coming to the last location, ours. Okay. And also the bull was sorry, the bull was there with the, all the girls, and he his job is done. He needs to move on, right? Uh, okay. he's, he's done a lot of good work. <laughs> uh, so he's going to location two, which is Paul's farm. Yeah. yeah. So Baldy was here. Baldy was an, here. At a previous location. Yeah. The up, uh, there's another bull that needs to go get taken to location two. No, 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 no. Bro. So <laughs> we start off with, <laughs> look, we start off at location one. There are okay, no you. cows in the trailer. Okay. When we leave location one, we have one bull in there and we have Baldy, the one that's been bullied her whole life and she's as big as a six who month is, old. Okay. Who is not a bull because she, she's a girl. Keep, she is a girl because yes. you keep on saying Baldy and then bull. That is very, I'm sorry. Together. It's very confusing. So, it's very Baldy, confusing. not a bull, a heifer. Not a bull, a heifer. We have one heifer and one bull got in the trailer. One yes. bull, one, 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 one heifer. Okay, got we it. We go to location two. Uh huh. And there's only supposed to be heifers, but there happens to be a bull there, and we don't know whose bull it is. Got it. And so now we're like, okay, delay of game, and flag on the play. Yeah, right. <laughs> ten yards and back. then once they find out that okay, it should be fine. Uh, Paul and Dale, my father-in-law's name is Dale. They are working on getting ready to let the, the bull out. Uh, making sure Baldy stays in the trailer. Me and Ash are standing like 
here's the here's the trailer in the in the opening we're standing like right here <laughs> like where they're supposed to potentially run to and mm-hmm. so at one point i'm like let's scoot over a little bit well let's scoot over a little bit more and then i look at dale and i go should we move and he's like <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all probably want to go like between the truck and the trailer. That's like the safest spot. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when he lets him out, the bull bursts out, jumps eight feet in the air. Like Dale is looking at bull hooves in Bro. slow motion for him, I'm sure. Bro. And it's just like, I'm glad I didn't have my head right there. And so now we're all like, what's about to happen? Are these bulls about to throw down? They go and sniff each other. They seem to like each other. They were yelling at each other like crazy. No oh, yeah. fight happens. Okay. The bull we like just, just brought like, over. Just two dogs barking at each other. And yeah. Figuring out, oh, wait, you're cool. <laughs> Dude, the bull we just brought over immediately is like, after they talked, you know, talked, sniffed each other, starts going and checking out all the heifers. And the, um, the red bull who was already there is following him. And I swear, I, I kid you not, all of us watch them and we're like, they're they're negotiating. He's like, this one's mine. No, you can have that one. No, that one's mine. That one's mine. No, yeah, you can have that one. I'm like, they're divvying up the girls. Like, they were totally doing it. They were both following each other disgusting. around, checking all the girls out. <laughs> and the girls loved it. Disgusting. <laughs> Dude, bulls and heifers are crazy, man. Hey, they're but players, yeah. but they're fair. Yeah. <laughs> from there, life, from their yeah. life got easy. <laughs> Oh my god. I hate that you've done that. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, from there we go to location three. There's uh, our our red little baby six month cow waiting for us all by herself. So that one was pretty easy to get in. Ash had to like prevent Baldy from getting out of the trailer, but then step away to let red get in and and now they're all in there and then they come here and it's pretty simple from there. They were uh, they were very happy when they got here. They immediately like immediately started just eating grass and then we saw some cow zoomies which is cow an adorable zoomies. thing yeah you know like a dog gets zoomies and they go crazy and they run around in circles and stuff yeah that happens with cows too especially when they're younger dude yeah cows are just anyway continue yeah, yeah, yeah. dogs i don't want to i don't want to freaking get sidetracked because i feel like we could talk about cows this entire podcast <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm good. sure to the Tap Haven podcast where we talk about milk and cows. Milk and yeah. cows, man. Yeah, why not? Why not? It's, you didn't get any Highland cues, did you? No, 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 no. I don't think so. <laughs> Highland cues. No, 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 no. no. But yeah, Fantastic. that was that Let's was a crazy go. day. And then literally the the very next day, we wake up and I made coffee, and then I'm getting ready, and I hear pop, pop, pop. And I'm like, why is my neighbor already doing target practice? Wow. And I asked Ash if she heard it. And then all of a sudden the power goes out. And I'm like, oh, oh that's, that's what not. that was. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> and then we're like, well, I guess we're doing work on the farm today. Uh, and then like eventually, like an hour and a half later, the power comes back on. And the water doesn't. Mm. Because we have a well with a pump. Is it it's an electric pump, I'm guessing? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And so I learned a little bit. We we fixed that, too. Uh, there's like a way to kickstart it or prime it because yeah. it's like a safety mechanism. If you have a leak in your house, the pump's not supposed to run with no pressure. Uh, yeah. So it was at no pressure for some because there was no electricity, I guess. Or something. I don't know. But yeah, that was uh, that was nuts. Oh, oh. And then the top it all off, we found out. At the end of the day yesterday, right when we, because this was happening yesterday, the power outage and stuff, we we're getting ready to go uh, celebrate father, Father's Day at my father in law's and make him some dinner and stuff. And we get a quarter mile away, and the car's like, Oh, you've got nine PSI in the back right tire. We're like, Oh, fuck. Tight. So we turned around. Nine is nothing for those listeners who are like, what does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> that's that nothing. That that's supposed that to be like 40. Supposed to be up to yeah. like 39, 40. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't understand. Eight. So that's how my morning started today was fixing that flat tire, which luckily held. And uh, yeah, that's been about it. It's been great. <laughs> hey, hey, it's, it's exciting. It's definitely it exciting. It's nice having the week. 
No, not at all. The cows are also just adorable. And they're like, um, so eventually they got in the pen. There's a pen that we wanted them to go to. So they like, no, this is home. This is safe. But for the first like day and a half, two days, they're just like super happy and calm and just roaming around, chilling and stuff like that. So they're happy. It's really cute. The cutest part is that the one-year-old is mothering the six-month-old fully. The six-month-old will lay down first. The year-old will look around, make sure everything's okay. The year-old is constantly licking and checking on her. Oh, and then uh, Deku and Yui got to meet the cows for the first time today, or, like, up close and personal because they're confined. And Deku, like, kissed both cows, like, licking their noses and stuff like that. And when he he was walking away, the really tiny one tried to, like, run after him, like, like, playfully. He was like, let's go. Oh, but I'm... I'm pinned in right cow. now. I can't. Do that. <laughs> oh. So, can't and then they got separation like exa- anxiety. Or, yeah. or oh, what, no. what is it? Where the barriers in between? Yeah. And the dogs like want to kill each other. Then you lift the barrier, and they're oh, like, God. "Well, the worst part is like, the, so the pin is for cows, right? The dogs are like, I can get through that. Yeah. <laughs> they could, and I have to be like, no, stop. You're not going in there. And don't teach them how to get out either. Gosh, oh, darn it. no. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. It begins. But yeah, I'm a, we're real farmers now. We had some nice. real Stardew Valley going. We got some real Stardew <laughs> Valley. It ain't much, but it's decent work. Yeah. You can, <laughs> you can legally say that now. <laughs> yeah. oh. You weren't able to before. But you, you got that right. Now. <laughs> got that right. <laughs> but yeah, how's your week been, Nat? You've been up Oh, soon? man. So my you week. moved your desk? Oh, uh, yeah. So, um... I last week was pretty much the same thing as before work. Um, I am slowly beginning to adapt to the level of work that is required for my job. Uh, It is not a fun experience, but it is a learning experience. That is how I am. uh, That's how I'm thinking about it. Uh, Let's see. What else? What else did I do? I man, other than I have my workout schedule has changed. So literally after this podcast, I go and go into my garage and I work out. Like let's let's drink. I used to and drink. Then immediately oh, yeah. go work eat, out. <laughs> drink, eat. Five minutes after that, I'm working out. <laughs> That's and how you get an iron know. stomach right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it is currently by the time we finish this, dear listener, uh, I will. It will be probably around eight. 8 30 maybe 9 when we finish so i will be done with my workout by like 10 30 maybe 11 <laughs> and then what time do you wake up in the morning and i wake up at oh god six o'clock in the morning Oof. no no wake i wake up at five o'clock in the morning <laughs> so Oof. mondays and tuesdays are rough for me wow. um, but it is a i, I have a feeling it's like it's got to be a growth season for me or something because that's happening. And then I'm also working out again with my trainer during the week. So I'm going straight from work to a training session, which I have never done. And that feels pretty good, honestly, because it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like a community event. And I find that I probably don't have a lot of community events that require me to leave my house. And so it's not impactful to my ment my mental like if I'm in front of a, a screen, I love y'all, but if you were here, it'd be better. <laughs> yeah, 100%. so, so yeah, we'll, we'll have that studio, that Tap Haven studio someday, for sure, right? For sure, yeah. we'll all be in like uh in the Bourbon. I don't want to say the Bourbon Trail. I wanted to say the Bourbon Trail, but maybe there's like the Bourbon Zone, the Bourbon, the bourbon Zone, the Bourbon, the bourbon Zone, zone. <laughs> the Bourbon Zone. It's like the Blue we, Zone. We map bourbon that zone. to the limestone in the U.S. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what yeah. like alcoholic dads enter whatever they're like completely zoned in and they're like no like we got to do it this way they're in the bourbon zone they're yeah. in the bourbon zone <laughs> anyway um back on track I'm working out more than I'm uh with some with other people than I used to which is good and then I'm moving my desk as you can see I am now in a smaller room with more with which weird because it feels like it's more space i'm going to put a bookshelf in that closet and i'm going to put scandinavian styled wood slats on the wall 
and I'm going to build a new computer. Oh, yeah. Nice. Those are my things. Those are my things. That's mm. exciting. The idea is to create an aesthetic because I really love aesthetic. Like whenever you can walk into a room and know that like that's the aesthetic of the room. I love that, but I've never had it for my office. So that is the goal for this year for me. Um, my goals tend to have to be short term because if I don't see immediate progress and or completion, I get bored. So we are, we're moving, we're moving fast. Nice. <laughs> But that's all, that's all I got. So, before we move on from that, you're gonna you're talking about an aesthetic with building your um your PC. Mm -hmm. There's this YouTube channel where she makes amazing stuff in general, and she started doing PCs, and she did like a coffee machine PC. Oh it's my called gosh, I Nerd saw her. Forge. Yes, Nerd I watched Forge. the coffee video. That that was so dope. Yes, Nerd, Nerd Forge. Forge. She built a PC that makes coffee. She's also built like I hate that incredible she's things. Created a wait. Nerd Forge is a is is it like a YouTube channel or is it? It's like, a YouTube yeah, channel. It's a YouTube okay. channel. Okay. 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 She's I don't know if she's Scandin. Why do I want to say Scandinavian? I don't know why I want to say Scandinavian, but because <laughs> I just Norway. Said she's Norwegian. Yeah. I think she's been on Linus Tech Tips. She made like the cyberpunk PC, I think. Oh, and no. That looks super dope. But also, it. that looks like it would probably destroy me if I know. anything happened to it because I'd be so invested. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. Lie. Well, I, no. I, yeah. She has a bunch <laughs> of really cool PC builds. But uh, if I can, hold on. Let me see if I can pull it up because it's what got me thinking about it but it's in the fractal um design north case and if you look it up it mm. it, it 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 is dripping in swagoo <laughs> fractal design oh yeah that kind of looks like what very oh yeah yeah, yeah. we yeah, were just yeah, looking yeah. at yeah yeah it's got and like wooden will... slats on we're gonna the that's pretty cool Let's yeah. See if we can do the shared do screen thing here. I was about to say, go ahead and share. There it we up. go. Yeah, look at this guy. That is nice. beautiful. Yeah, that is very. Is that that's what she? That's what she used, isn't it? Mm, I, she no, she have. built her own slats. So oh, she, of course she did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did her own wooden slats. Let me see if I can share this screen because, actually, no. I'll just go ahead and uh, send it to you guys, and you, can, you guys can share the screen because okay. I don't know how Arc handles this share but i'll put it in the chat and if you guys want to go ahead and put it up by all means but this was the inspiration for what i wanted to do the idea is to kind of give it like this um i think just something lambent, happened just some kind of lambent energy kind of vibe i there, think your what paste the heck? failed <laughs> gosh gosh darn it hey babe that's that not what I tried to do. That's quote or something. That's not what, what I wanted to do. God dang it. It's AI oh, taking no over. Definite hey, man. hey, man. Since hey, man. I hate when that, that happens to me like all the time. Don't I try read to... that. Read read that one. Read that one. <laughs> Don't, read that. Don't read the last one. Read that one. God I'll damn. pick the specific tab. Let's see if I can just trick yeah, it. Yeah, go ahead and pull that there over. We that's, go. that's the inspiration. Oh, right there. Yeah. Yeah. hey, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to kind of like the idea is to do warm but uh, austere. Wow. So maybe not that as dude, much. Light, it looks like I bourbon. It does have a bourbon. It's got look that to amber it. color. Oh. I'm just, I'm just saying. I might not do the like the little, the big bright lights. I think I'm thinking the halo lights mm. to give it a more like kind of subdued lighting, but I'll still also keep the uh, maybe keep the RGB streamers. We'll see. Maybe that's yeah, be awesome. that's the idea. One day we will get popular enough to where the community <laughs> goes through and bugs <laughs> Linus so much. That he that builds us build custom PC? bourbon PCs. Bro. All three of us have to like triple the amount of charisma that we're bringing to the table, guys. Yeah, we, we got off our game <laughs> at that point. We're, Dude, we're not imagine, there yet. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Sorry, we got to switch back. Imagine you have a Glen Karen in, in the PC, and that's the reservoir. Oh, or part of the reservoir. Oh, wow. And then the water has He's to so come cool. through here. See, you're thinking, too, you're thinking too small. 
the Glen yeah. Karen is the PC case. <laughs> <laughs> See, I big went, and Karen. it's all glass. You know how like uh, Leanne oh has uh, that uh, almost that fishbowl case. Have you seen that? I don't yeah. think I have. Where it's like yeah, glass yeah. on the top and on to and on the side. It's like that, but like the Glen Karen. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very. Oh great. my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Have you seen wait, it? Wait. No, 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 no. It's, no. I oh, just he's got gotta, something else. <laughs> I, I, I just gotta see if I can uh, share share this tab because, of mm. course, somebody decided to. Uh, um, no. Did somebody already do it? Don't ruin it, Eric. Don't ruin. Oh no. Actually, that's kind of cool. Wow, that's pretty good, right? A, a wooden barrel-themed PC with a with, with a copper tubes of Woodford Reserve, and look, look at, they colored the, the, color liquid. the liquid. Eric, 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 unshare the screen. We need to have a talk. Eric, oh my god, Eric, uh, unshare the screen. We're gonna talk. It's real magnificent quick to the, with, with the chatter. No, no, it's not, guys. <laughs> No, there is there is themed creation of an item that uh, fits aesthetic, and then there is themed creation of an item that gives no shits about the aesthetic. <laughs> and as as cool as it uh, is to think, man, I'm gonna build this PC out of out of staves from from a uh, from a bourbon barrel barrel barrel. Oh my gosh, from a barrel. It's not a good idea. Does not look cool. Does not. That slap. one didn't look. Uh, the The outer part of that one didn't look cool. Yeah. Did not but the this. inner part, I think they did a pretty good job with. That's fair. No. But it is fair. a. I don't know about the. It the looks like a piece of furniture, thing. guys. <laughs> it did. It very much did look. It, it did look, look like a piece, a piece of furniture. furniture. <laughs> <laughs> it really did look like that. I'm not looking for my PC to look like a piece of furniture. It needs to look like a cross between. Uh, something that you would pick up from a designer store because <laughs> you're into, I don't know, uh, strange figures and the next big thing in terms of technology. I need Apple and collectible to be, to come together and make my PC. That's what I want. That's fair. And yeah, Lee, what, this thing is. right there. Yeah, I was actually oh, going to start. I mean, start- Lee and Lee is just sick, 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 sick. So I was thinking of building in this before because I was going to go do an all all white build that like completely whited out. But I saw that Scandinavian one the with the brown the wood slats in the front, and I was like, "That's actually more my speed." I think. So yeah, I, I really like the Scandinavian one. Yeah, I mean, this is neat, but it is more like an aquarium. Yeah, and I don't want an aquarium. I I'm not planning on putting this mm-hmm. anywhere where it's going to be like on display on display you know i'd much rather it be like oh what's that in the corner i'd be like that's my pc dude (laughs) anyway so that's what i did with my week uh eric what did you get up to man oh man so it has been uh this past weekend we ended up going to florida for a volleyball tournament we did a little sand tournament me and two other guys Mm. man it was so hot it is insane how hot mm. Florida gets sometimes. Like I, yes, I, my parents had a house there. I would go there all the time and it just gets miserably hot. So we half of the time during the day was us rolling out a faucet a hose and spraying down the court. So we weren't like burning our feet. Um, I should have brought my sand socks because I have sand socks specifically for this reason. But I didn't think it would be that hot. But it the feels like was 115 or some nonsense. 115? Nah, dude. Miss me with that. It was miserably hot. And we we ended up, we were we were probably the best team there. And we got through pool play and just dominated. Like, wasn't even close. For the one match we lost in pool play, we tried something entirely different just to kind of dick around for a game. And we were like, ah, it didn't work out, whatever. And we go into playoffs and it is so hot. And 
we just couldn't make it through the day. <laughs> we made it to the semifinals, came in third, and we just we couldn't. We were dying at the end. Like one of the guys jumped and was like, "I can't jump, man. I can't jump anymore." It was so hot, but we it was a super fun day, um, and so that the next day we ended up being like, hey, let's do a beach day. So we had the beach day for Father's Day type of thing. We get to the beach and we went out for breakfast that morning and it started raining. We were like, well, crap, maybe, you know, Florida's weird. Sometimes it'll thunderstorm and then it'll be bright and sunny. So it thunderstormed in the morning. We get to the beach and it's nice and sunny. We're like, cool, let's enjoy the beach day. The waves were like 10 foot swells. It was crazy. We were having a blast just sitting in the water sitting on the beach and about an hour later we look out and it's like sunny to the right sunny to the left pitch black in the middle we're like hmm gotta go i wonder if that's gonna hit us and we gotta look go. we look at the radar and there's like this beautifully spaced patch of just red and purple in yeah. a giant line that's like coming straight for us. Let's We're see, like, well, maybe, right look, maybe it'll, it'll miss us. See, maybe it'll miss us. Eric. It starts, it starts rolling in, <sighs> rolling in. So finally we're like, okay, we got to call it a day. You can, you and so we get to the car. I don't want to make it with you. <laughs> I kid you not. We <laughs> step into the car and the downpour is immediate. Like it goes from nothing to you can't see three feet in front of your face the minute we sit down in the car. And so the other couple that we were with, we were trying to text each other because we couldn't go outside now. We couldn't go outside of our cars and talk about this. So we're texting each other like, what do you want to do for lunch? Do we still want to do it? What about if we try this? Y'all are trying to act normal like there's not a <laughs> crazy tropical storm <laughs> raining on your parade. And you're like, man, you know, like, I just, I don't think I, just, I really want a burger right now. Do you, know? do you want some of that flounder at the place next, next door, you know? So, essentially, the way this works, every beach in Florida, for some reason, is on one of those islands. They always have little straits in between. And so, there's always just one road. And I didn't conceptualize how this would work until we started making it work in the sense that there's only one road and the storm just hit and all umpteen thousand people that were on the beach are now trying to leave on that singular road. Gotta get out. It took us like 40 minutes to get across the bridge off of this island mm -mm. from the beach. Mm -mm. It, it was miserable. And then, of Maybe course, it was right. Father's Day. So everywhere we tried to go to eat was a five and a half hour wait or some nonsense. We were like, well, no. <laughs> and luckily, we found this wonderful pizza joint that was a refurnished warehouse. It reminded me a lot of that place near you, Anthony. And we were like, oh, this is pretty cool. And so we we went there and it's like this refurbished warehouse and they they had pizza and there was no wait. Nobody was there. We were like, dads don't like pizza, of course. Nobody would come here. But it was a phenomenal pizza joint. And yeah, so we had pizza and then headed back. Um, but yeah, that was that was most of the week. Uh, did some did some volleyball. I played a good bit of a game we'll talk about later and then uh mm. yeah a good bit of a game you'd play later. <laughs> the uh before we move on uh i i was reminded because my dog finally came back inside uh deku already decided to roll in uh cow patties oh so of course. Solid. that yeah, was this yeah. afternoon hosing him down oh man he had leave. to get the pheromones on him man he had to so gross dude he had to get him out dude yeah so gross i don't know dude. why you're so upset yeah, that's a, that's a dog thing. And you should have expected that. I've that's, seen it happen. How dare you I was clean just, that off? Honestly, like, how dare you take that away? From I, me? I I was ready for it to happen. I was just there's only one of me. Only <laughs> I was trying to make you know sure what? the cows you were just, you were just good. Be a better dog dad, you know. Oh, shut up. You just be <laughs> what are we drinking? 
<laughs> oh, so so this week we have quite a, a cool uh, experience lined up for us. Pretty cool. We have the wild turkey long branch that we're going to try today. And it's got a heavy top right there. It, it does. It's right heavy, to the face. period. <laughs> it, it is actually pretty, pretty hefty. Now, the long branch is super interesting. So this is a wild turkey product. A lot of people know wild turkey from Wild Turkey 101, which is one of probably the most um, prestigious, known, common whiskeys of the day. And a lot of people love wild turkey. I think wild turkey is a phenomenal product overall i have some other wild turkey products with me that i'm gonna pull out and kind of taste test against um and the the thing about this one is that wild turkey of course is a kentucky distillery and does a kentucky a great kentucky straight bourbon and this is their kentucky straight bourbon however they this was a collaboration between two people at the company, and what they wanted to do was kind of get the Texas heritage into their bourbon. And so, say. this is a Kentucky straight bourbon. I'll have to check the age statement. I, I have a little bit of the details uh, while, with me. While you're looking that up, uh, wives, if you're listening... We have very large bottles, so y'all can potentially steal them from your husbands and join us, set like off camera if you want, and and see what you think oh. while we're all talking about it. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But so the trick about this one is that after they do all the age uh, aging, which this is an eight year bourbon apparently, seventy five percent corn. It's 13% rye and 12% malted barley with a gold hue almost. And the trick about this one is then they add in some mesquite and they distill it with mesquite charcoal. And so this has kind of gone through a filtration process where they use mesquite charcoal. And mesquite has a very distinct woody smoky type of you know aroma going on and so we should be getting a, a little bit of a little bit of smoke and i i am i'm just happy I'm just, that i'm just so happy to be back <laughs> that's what i was gonna say too it's i'm like it smells like bourbon again it's oh, been so it, long. It, it, oh, it's been it so has, long. It has. We just keep getting all of these random, weird, fruity, like, wines, I basically. Mean, wild Turkey does such a good product, always. Like, I love all the Wild Turkey. And so I have two other bottles here. One, which I'm going to get the guys to try very soon, is the Russell's 10-Year. This is another mm. Wild Turkey product. Probably the one they're most famous for right now. This is the one that's kind of taking the bourbon world by storm a lot of people Russell's consider saying. this their daily drinker oh. and i'm along with a lot of those people i love the russell's reserve tenure i'm not going to give a lot of notes on it but i kind of want to compare it just because it is a wild turkey product and then the oh other yeah so thing i'll be have, uh oh go ahead the other thing i have is a wild turkey single barrel which this is from what i understand just the base spirit that would then be aged with mesquite in a uh, in a lot of ways. So now the only thing that's going to be different is this is going to be much higher proof than the long branch. And that'll mm -hmm. bring out some different flavors. But I'm going to go through and kind of compare some of these since they're all from the same distillery, but all kind of have slight differences to them. Man, and as uh, as I said last week, I'll be doing it again. I'll be using the benchmark as my benchmark to compare against. This is a single barrel, only like 30, 32 bucks. It's insanely good. Nice. And hard to beat. So now, what are you getting on the nose so far? Home. 
<laughs> he's gonna love this one it's gonna be a 10 out of 10 for Nat. he's gonna be so biased oh man he's gonna be yeah. like this this isn't the brandy swill that we had the past Stop. four weeks <laughs> there's nothing wrong with brandy it's just it's nice to like come back to the thing that like I don't know started it you know and this but, is very just it's very woody it's bourbon very, on the nose yeah it's, I get it's, wood some vanilla, mm-hmm. a little bit of that corn sweetness, and then a little bit of smoke. The mesquite mm-hmm. isn't Very too subtle. present on the nose, but I do get a little bit of it, which is just a great I thing. Am, well, I am a fan off the nose so far. We'll see. Ditto. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Anthony, are you already poured up? I'm poured up, you know, to, uh, to Stardew Valley convincing me to have cows. Hey. There you go. <laughs> to Stardew Valley... <laughs> To Stardew Valley doing the exception that Leonardo DiCaprio never could. I, I, I was talking to my mom just the other day, and she said, your three-year-old wish came true. And I'm so tired. I'm like, I made a wish three years ago? No. When I was three, I told my parents, we should just get a cow so dad doesn't have to mow the lawn anymore. <laughs> and now we have cow mowers. Two? Yeah. I never knew. Well, cheers to being back in bourbon land. And this mm. is a bourbon. This is a bourbon. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. We have a great deal of wood right up front. It has a st- almost staggering amount of black pepper in the middle. And you get mm-hmm. a lot of that mesquite overtone just kind of coating your palate. Mm-hmm. I almost get like a smoky uh, viscous viscosity that kind mm-hmm. of coats, coats the mouth. I will say the end of this is a very sweet, but like mellow sweet, not like high, crazy, high sugar feel, but like very mellow kind of amount of like finish. Like for me, I'm hit up front with a lot of the smokiness and the and the woody flavors. And then immediately after is the, it, the end. It's just like, it's all money. Yeah. I get a lot of on the back end. I almost perceive it as a like oaky cinnamon. Yeah, I just caught that on the nose. Yeah, like oaky cinnamon, like a big red that's been left out in the car for too long. Yep. Like, Sorry, guys, I'm distracted because <laughs> my you, 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 you didn't have to say okay, Eric. It's okay. You can you can let that one die. I'm sorry. Well, you know the the <laughs> thing back in the day as kids, your friend would walk up to you. And they'd be like, watch this. And they'd like lick a big red, the wrapper, and like slap it against your forehead, right? And then it would start to burn after a while. (laughs) (laughs) Eric, what school did you go to, man? (laughs) The same one that Anthony went to, let's be real. Wait, what happened? I missed it. I'm so distracted by my dog who was stuck outside trying to dry for like five hours and now I'm letting him sniff the sniffy things and he's going crazy. He's going crazy. He's like, whoa, that smells good. Let me eat it. He's going crazy, Pills. Remember kids at our elementary school, they used to get big red and they would like lick the wrapper and then like stick it to their forehead and it was like God, burn. yes, yes. And See? then it would burn and you'd leave a big rectangle on your freaking yes. forehead no. and it would hurt for the rest of the day. Yes. And no. that that's just how that's just how bad school was because that's what we <laughs> did. Like but we that's were just the so experience bored. that you get on the tail end of this. Oh that, my God. That feeling of heat and the slight cinnamon smell along with burnt, not mm-hmm. skin, but that was what it did smell like, you know, back uh-huh. in elementary school. Bro, ele- must have been rough being y'all in elementary school. Uh, apparently. I mean, it was so, it was so cray that one day we got one of the pigs to uh, snort powdered sugar because of what it looked like. Because <laughs> the they, pigs? we had two pigs that we went to school with. Um, they were twins. Their 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 name was actually Pig. Pig, Pig One and Pig Two. They were twins. Yeah, identical. I don't they, like. I don't like that. I don't like that. Nope. Nope. Your story <laughs> has no lo- no longer funny. It's not. Nope. 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 One I, day I, I rescind my giggles. Nope. <laughs> one day they released a couple of pigs in the school Stop. and they wrote pig one and pig three on them 
stats. <laughs> so people couldn't find Pig 2 because it didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all must have gone in the backwoods of like America or something. <laughs> Releasing pigs in the Dude. middle of a elementary school and then saying, Meg, hold on, catch the pig. Dude, this was Where's our high the second school. One? Apparently our high school was like top rated in the state. And then like a ma- there was like a hundred students from there that went to like Georgia Tech and it was just ridiculous. But it was also the worst. It was very <laughs> skewed, though, because it was very new. And so they kind of tricked people. Because mm. th- the first group that went fully through our high school were kind of chosen. The chosen. And so they, the first three years, they all started at different grades, right? The the class right before us was the first one to go all the way through. Mm. And so before that, or maybe it was our class that was the first no, no, one to go. Our all, class all, all was the, the first through. time that all four uh, years were there. Yes. So our first seniors, they never had anyone older than them go to school with them in high school, which... There's got to be some psychologists out there that just want to talk to them. Got and, it. <laughs> got want to know. <laughs> like, got to. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, how many, how many like egocentric people do you think came from there? Because they never got stepped on. They never got bullied. Like, <laughs> they were always the king or hey, the queen. <laughs> but they skewed our results because they specifically chose it, those, those groups and they had smaller classes. And so statistically, they just did way better. And so when you look at those years, they were like, oh, this this high school is amazing, much more amazing than it actually was by the numbers, you know. So now, that, man, this whiskey is so different than their other options for sure. Where are the you mesquite, with those with these? So like with the, the other, sorry, the Russell's Reserve is far more woody. This this really? this gets you even more. Now this is a ten year bourbon, and it's only forty five percent, which the the long branch, of course, I believe, is forty three percent. So they're Bro, very similar. I know that we had the opportunity to both see this ourselves, but you happen to leave out the fact that it's Texas mesquite charcoal. Oh no, I heard that. Part. No, no, no. Yeah, that's what I said yeah, at the yeah, beginning. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. That's My selective saying. hearing is terrible, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this was a collaboration between Wild Turkey's creative director, uh, Matthew McConaughey, and Wait, the what? master distiller, Eddie Russell. Um, what we're drinking right now? Yeah. So, so the all right guy said okay for this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is gold. His bourbon, essentially. Interesting. Uh, this is the Matthew McConaughey Long Branch bourbon. This is actually pretty good, Matthew. It is. It is. I think the so the, the the mesquite, the little bit of smokiness, it it's a little sweet. Mm-hmm. Funnily enough, there's there's a good bit of sweetness there. It is very cinnamony on the taste. It's more vanilla on the nose for me. Um, but this is much sweeter than the Russell's Reserve. And the sweetness in the Wild Turkey Single Barrel is totally different, although that has some sweetness too. Interesting. Like what like what's the flavor palette for that that uh barrel sweetness? It's darker. Like a it's almost got like a chocolate caramel like a darker sweetness vibe to it almost like a uh, so i think i'd more closely call it something like a demerara sugar mm. like a demerara sugar okay it's almost got a molasses type of flavor to it molasses it's a vibe uh, for sure this one is like vanilla and cinnamon okay okay this one so definitely feel as if like this one is like candy hmm like i'm getting like well not let me let me rephrase this um 
this is probably the sweetest bourbon I've had that's like obvious in a while. Mm-hmm. I think the the I, I'm I'm starting to trace the lines. I have a feeling I I like sweet things. <laughs> I think the I think the Ferrand was a little bit sweeter than this. Some other ones, let's see. The Ferrand, in my opinion, was a, a, a little bit sweeter. Yeah. I think that... What about the pop the um, popcorn? No, Popcorn Sutton wasn't this sweet. No. Yeah. no. That one wasn't as sweet to me. The... Uh, I need to pick up that bottle. Where it the be? star... The, I, I guess I'm going to exclude Wars. the single malts, but I would say... Like they're they're totally different in how they're sweet, but I do think the Star Wars, both of them, were a little bit sweeter than this. Mm, um, fair. I actually think that the the Breckenridge bourbon that we had was a little bit sweeter than this to me too. That was the one that was in Sherry Cast. Oh, I I can see that. Yeah, for sure. See, you have a list in front of you. I have to go by my flavor memory. That's fair. That's fair. But I think this is a uh, sweeter is a than a typical. Like this is, is sweeter than the Baker's sweetness, for example. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. This is sweeter than the uh, new riff. This is sweeter than the sorry, the new riff uh, single malt uh, rye. I can and see that. Also, yeah, and it's also sweeter than. Man, what else? What else could I compare? It's definitely sweeter than the uh, Sagamore. Oh yeah, a hundred for sure, for sure. Okay, 100%. so I will say this thing is an. It's. It Wait, feels like it feels like home. It's great. Huh. That's, that's about to like start rating this thing before. I'm about to start rating, rating this thing, ready. guys. We better we better go ahead and speed up this this new hickey thingy. Anthony, what are your thoughts? It's very uh, smooth, and by smooth, it's like oily. Like there's this nice texture to it that's very just smooth and I don't know, it's oily. It's good. <laughs> It's very much like a a good baseline bourbon. And by baseline, I mean like it hits all the right notes. It's almost like a good song. You know, it's not too sweet. It's not too bitter. It's not too harsh. It's not too light. It's got the perfect color. It It's like, you know how Nat keeps saying, it's like, I'm back at home. It's like when you're watching the first iron man and he's like i just want a burger you know yeah. you just want a bourbon you're gonna be very happy with this right it's not gonna put on some sort of sriracha ranch on there which is a great sauce but when you want a burger you get mayonnaise and ketchup that's it ain't nothing better <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's just all around good it's great on the nose, great on the palate. Nice. That's probably the thing that it sticks out the most is just the uh, the smoothness, the oiliness, where it kind of coats your tongue a little bit in a. I want to say viscosity, but I don't think that actually makes sense. Yeah, it has a almost like creamy mouthfeel. Mm. It's almost got like a. Um, uh, like if you've ever had like a ba- Bailey's Irish cream, it's almost got like that kind of consistency to it. Maybe not mm. as much, but like it definitely is very viscous. Like you can even see that from the glass. There's almost no tears. It kind of just sticks to the side of the glass. Yeah. Wow. I didn't see that. Until Which is probably it. why I get that feeling because it's sticking to the, the tongue too. Yeah. It coats your mouth really nicely. So if you like those more viscous, lasting flavors, this Barely kind of sticks around in your mouth for a good while, which is really like that causes a cool experience. Mm-hmm. I would say some other notes that I'm kind of picking up a little bit is I'm almost getting like a citrusy note now. 
Hmm. At the beginning or the end? Right at the beginning. It almost has like a um like a, a very subtle orange hint to it. I'm getting orange rind at the end. I could see that too. Orange rind, like that bitter orange rind mm -hmm. flavor. I could see that. But I, I, I could feel see like that. that's I feel like that's synonymous with the um alcohol that lives inside of this the spirit. Yeah. To be honest. So I I think I catch I think it's very possible that the orange is more pronounced because of the the uh the sweet profile at the, at the end of it of the tasting. So I can definitely see orange. Yeah. For sure. Friends. Yeah. I believe so, it's time. Anthony, what how how would you rate this one? Yeah, Anthony. How would you rate it? Go on. He asks very much obviously not watching me take a another Big taste. Old squill. That's a hundred percent why I chose you first too. <laughs> Cause he went back for seconds. <laughs> um I hope I'm not underrating it. I know I was slightly slash majorly distracted by my very traumatized and sad puppy. Uh, but I think it's a very... It's hard for me to rate this. Hmm. Mm. So, well, like, I am using the benchmark to try to compare it against. And the benchmark is a single barrel, and it's really good. And in some ways, it's better... But at the same time, like, this one is so solid that I'm like, do I give it a four or do I give it a five? Like, and I, I'm leaning towards maybe, go ahead. I said, don't get crazy. Don't get crazy. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's a four or a five because for one, my brain is broken. Uh, <laughs> it's He's been a broke, long, long few days. Yeah, um. Good. And I, I, I'm what the, the reason I'm saying that is because I'm struggling to remember like what is a four to me. I think a five is a daily drinker, right? Something I would drink yeah. any time. That's how I would I I do it. Is it they, these are my staples? Mm -hmm. If I Nicotine. consider this the yeah. staple flavor, and uh, I'm like, this is something that mm -hmm. I would always want to have. I could have this every day. Like this, that's a five. You know? So I kind of want to say this is definitely a, a five. Like this is very much a five, and then I don't know what I ever if I ever told y'all what I think the single barrel benchmark is, but that one's probably more like a a seven. Um, it could it could be a six, but right now because it's only thirty two dollars, it's a seven. It's a seven. You are cannot you sure you're not saying that because it's value driven, or are you saying that from flavor? value for sure the flavor is incredible so without the value i'm thinking maybe so i mean it could be a seven but it's i would say easily a six right I but yeah. with the fact that it's 32 dollars that's like, incredible it's incredible holy but it, shit but anthony i feel like our ratings can't change before mm -hmm. we know about the money i feel like this yeah. is why i we ask can, you what you think yeah. your price is after before. yeah yeah after the rating yeah. For sure. No, I don't. Money will definitely intend to. Like, but here's the thing. My... I I do think it's important that the the price shouldn't change your rating, for sure. However, it can dictate whether or not it would be a daily driver or not, for sure. Mm. Right. For example, my tin, my favorite whiskey. I'm not going to drink it every day. I just I can't waste that type of money. <laughs> you know, so it, it it is one of to be a daily driver to be a true five. I do feel like it has to be at least affordable for your income. Like it has to be something that's pretty reasonably priced for you. If your daily driver, if your five is two hundred and fifty bucks, well, that can't really be your daily driver, right? Like it can't be the staple to which you judge. All whiskeys, I feel. Yet. But so what do you what are you falling on, Anthony? What is it? It's a five. Okay. For sure. And and yeah. what would you pay for it? 
Anthony, I don't understand. Before you go, go ahead. In, before you go into pay for it, I think that you bring up a very valid point, and I think we should propose that we add as a separate classification whether something is a daily driver or not, because sometimes fives aren't daily drivers. <laughs> Right. Mm-hmm. I think at the very end, we should be able to say, is this worthy of being a daily driver, taking in the economic choice, taking in everything in terms of like flavor palette? Is it a daily driver? I think that could be like a final question that we could pose to all of us. Yeah. Be like, I feel like we drivers? kind of cover that afterwards, although we don't specifically well, answer no. that question. No, because I feel like we have very different potential answers because like That's I could too. list my current daily driver. It's bullet, and that is not a daily driver for me. I l- I like it. It's fine. It's, it's good. Probably a f- it's probably really good too. But Anthony also said his daily driver is like a three. I said bullet yeah, three. Ex- exactly. No, 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 no. In one of the previous episodes, you were talking about how like oh, I could drink a three every correct. day. Correct. Mm-hmm. Right. But that's like, because I'm so different. Where it's like there 100%. are yeah, there's yeah, so yeah, right, it's right, so right. often that I know myself so well. I'm like. I can't appreciate a five right now. That's a waste on myself. So, I will drink it and not notice all the awesomeness. So what I'm proposing is that we add a separate category at the very end of rating. That's like, hey, is this is this worthy of being a daily driver for me? It's a yes or a no. Pretty much that's it. Okay. Yeah. I'm down for that. Yeah, yeah. We'll just try it out for this first one. We'll see. Yeah, we'll give it a f- give it a few runs. See how it goes. So, so Anthony, what would you pay for this whiskey? That's where I'm confused about how I th- think. Okay, it makes yeah. no sense to myself, but I'm just gonna tell you, right? This is thirty two dollars, and I say it's better, right? Or maybe it's thirty. Mm-hmm. I'd pay forty for it. <laughs> You'd pay, pay forty for the Long Branch, and I don't know why. Okay. okay, maybe okay. it's because the bottle is just so much... Like, look at this bottle. This bottle is, like, what? Uh, it's a, a plastic, metal, whatever, aluminum top, and it it looks like it's a fireball bottle, right? But it's the bottle metal. with the wild turkey in it, it's, like, a nice, <laughs> huge cork with this intricate thing. Thick glass. It, it's I, a thick glass, my guy. It's just satisfying. It's tactile. There's a whole experience to it that's just more awesome feeling. You know, the day when the day comes that we bring out quests end, I'm going to, like, lose my shit because just looking at those bottles, I'm like, yeah. the bottle game. Yeah, there's like a bottle game point. thing that messes with me. It manipulates my brain. Marketing is real, even in the bourbon world. Man. Yeah, hundred percent. It sets the mood. It sets the mood. 100%. If you're not in a good mood, you won't enjoy it. So, so Nat, what would what is your rating? What would what would you rate this? What would I rate this? This is a. So this is a, this is at least a five. Um... And I'm trying to like, I'm trying to be realistic with my rating because I know that for me, a five means I can drink this every day. Full stop. I don't care if I'm labeling it at the very end or not. I have to be able to drink it every day if it's at least a five. That's fair. So that being said, it's really good. Like, I really don't have anything bad to say about it. There's no bad notes to this bourbon. I don't think either of you have brought up anything negative about this bourbon. And I haven't brought up anything negative about this bourbon. And I, so I would love to say that, like, it's like a 4.7, 4.8, because I want to be like fair to what my ideal would be. But there is not a there is not a doubt in my mind that I will be drinking this for the next two months. Good luck like, making it that long. I know exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like now that I know that it tastes this good, I don't know what I'm going to do with my free time other than you know sit brood and try and imitate Matthew McConaughey because he's made a pretty good bourbon like. A pretty damn good bourbon, if I if mm. I have to say myself, like really well done. So, do we have to go and I, watch Interstellar now? Please, no. 
I mean, it's I, you know what? I don't think it's a bad movie. But you didn't like that movie? I liked the movie. No, I did like the movie. Why do you say you don't think it's a bad movie? Because I feel like a lot of people don't like the movie. Are you serious? Yeah, because of the ending. Because they were sad. No, 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 no. Because the the what the fourth dimension actually is. Shit. Now, nah, can you explain to me? Okay. So <laughs> I need help here. <laughs> it's implied that the fourth dimension is love, and the and emotional ties that we have with each other. Yeah. I didn't get that. I I got the. How else is he able to go ahead and connect with his daughter and show those lights throughout throughout her life? Well, he got stuck in a like pocket black, in a black hole that area was, where yeah. everything is weird and happened. Yeah, it's apparently so. So the 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 black hole is supposed to be a portal into what is possibly the fourth dimension, and the fourth dimension in this case is the emotional ties that allow you to, I don't know, basically. <sighs> This was so much easier whenever I read it on yeah. the internet and I was able to explain it to myself. And yeah. now that I'm trying to speak it out loud, it makes no sense. <laughs> no, but um, so the the reason, the, the fact that he's able to like create this library of events that happen, that have, that have happened and that will happen and, and he's able to affect them the fact that he's able to dial into those those elements is tied to his relationship with his daughter. Mm-hmm. There's no other reason why he would be able to interact with those kinds of changes or or do the things that he is doing unless that the dimension was geared towards being able to allow him to do so. Yeah, I I think I abstracted it a little bit, although love might not be a terrible way to word it. But I considered the it, it so essentially you have this extra dimension that you get to exist in when you get mm-hmm. to the black hole, which Cooper does. Right? right. And in my opinion, when that happens, rather than it being something specific, it is whatever dimension you would like it to be like whatever connection you most strongly feel like the feelings that that you're most attached to become the extra dimension to which you can kind of like travel through was what I thought they were trying to represent because we saw Cooper's attachment to his memories, the things that he remembered best not only just whether or not it was his daughter or not, because then he could have traveled to any point in his daughter's life. Like it could have been anything, right? But there were there were moments that were specific. There were things that were specific. So I associated it more with like his strongest memories and that timeline became his extra dimension points. But I don't, yeah, I don't know said. if it was ever explained. What Eric though. said. Like, I don't yeah. know if anybody has an accurate, like, I don't know what the, the writer's intent was. Of course, that was just my interpretation. I just thought it was, I thought it was a good movie. Yeah, yeah that's, really, I mean, yeah. it's a very visually stunning, emotionally stunning, and just like theoretical it's physics really stunning movie. Yeah. Like, it's just so good. Really the music's well great. Like, who? don't think too much about it, guys. Just like, enjoy it. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. most I, movies. Don't think too much about it. Just yeah. you're along for the ride. <laughs> okay. I love like people were so upset whenever the game, the movie uh, came out, and they were like, "Oh, they came up with another reference to the wor- wormhole analogy, where they take a paper and they take a pencil and they stick a fi- stick their pencil through the paper, and that's how a wormhole works." I'm like, "Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Stop being so butthurt! Get out of here! Get out <laughs> of here! Just Stop. jealous you didn't." Just jealous, you're just jealous you didn't do it in the first place. It's a great yep. analogy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, stupid. You're stupid. So so now, what would you pay for this whiskey? I would pay anything. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I would probably pay around 50 bucks for it. 
Mm. Um, I know that with the name of Matthew McConaughey, it's a company with it probably going to be marked up a little bit more than usual. But I also think that with the level of spirit this is and how profitable it could be if you price this lower, I have to assume I had to pray that they were like, we could make a killing with this. Yeah, I think celebrity whiskeys can oftentimes go in two different directions. Mm hmm. Depending exactly. on whether or not they try to oversell their persona versus whether or not they try to make something that's more commercial. And I, I've seen both ends of the spectrum. Some of them go, I'm going to make an affordable product that sells really well and make makes a ton of money because that's what I can do with my name brand. And then you also have others that are like, ah, I'm going to make this product it's gonna hopefully be good and then i'm gonna sell it for an extremely high price and my name brand will make it sell regardless of whether or not it's good or not it's gonna be good there but that is a, that is a really interesting thing because like um to me like so if you have a, a streamer that you love basically hanging out with right you're watching them because you're basically hanging out right and then they go and do this and they're like this is this is my bourbon i just picked it out i love it i'm literally I've got 50 bottles in my basement, you know, and this is what I drink on a daily basis. Then it's like, and you're selling it to, to your, to your audience. And it's like, guys, when you drink this, you're literally like, we're drinking the same thing. <laughs> like it's, you know, it's like, we're hanging out. We're like, if you like it, I like, like you're we're enjoying the same thing on a daily basis. It's like, we're looking at the same moon, you know, but this moon is specifically for us. Like, this is just for me and you. It's just for us. Just for us. Yeah. So don't you, don't you I, worry your little heart about it, don't you? Come on over here. Come on okay. over here. Come on over here. It's okay. It's okay. You, you Matthew McConaughey, we're going to have a good time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'll i be honest. Matthew McConaughey did a really good job collaborating with this one. This was a this is a great standard whiskey, honestly. I think like Nat said, there's really not much I can say that's like a downside to this. And so for me, this really is the staple of what I would want an everyday drinker to be. And this a hundred percent is a five out of 10. I would drink this every day. I'm definitely going to keep a bottle of this. I love wild Turkey in general. I do think the other wild Turkey products that I have are all better than this, in my opinion. Ooh. But they're also, they have a little bit more clout. They're a little bit more established. Established. Um, this is just a solid middle of the road standard whiskey that everybody should kind of look at. It's a little bit on the sweeter side. There's some room for this to have some single barrel type of things. Some higher proof to this might even be absolutely wonderful i'd love to see this in the um you know closer to you know the 95 proof mark to 105 proof mark i think That'd would be, be a really insane. solid spot for this i mean the, we're the, we're sitting the flavor at flavor would be insane we're sitting at 86 proof right now um bumping it up a little but would be really cool and so this is a five for me. This is an everyday drinker for sure. And in, it convinced me I'm pouring another glass. Yeah. In my opinion, though, I would want to see this right around the $40 mark as well. And so I'm going to I'm going to look up the, the price here. Hit us with hit us with the bad news. So please hit us. With, actually, hit us with the good news. Let's yeah, I was about to say, it looks like we might have some good news here because I see a bunch of price tags from $29.95 to $40. I don't know what Let's the MSRP go. is. Really? But it looks like we're talking in the $30 range for most people around this, uh, around this whiskey, which is just a beautiful price point to be in. I think wow. at the $30 to $40 range, you're going to be hard-pressed to... Find something as good as this. Both the Russell's Reserve and the Wild Turkish 
turkey single barrel are all almost double that price and they are better in my opinion but for half the price this is a phenomenal pour this is phenomenal so now that i know like the price point i'm so proud of us <laughs> yeah it's just oh. got a wonderful vanilla oak flavor Oh, oh they look say at honeysuckle. That. They even mm. look at the slight hit citrus hints that I was talking oh, about. You picked go. up on it. Good job, dude. That's like getting a strike. Yeah. <laughs> at the I'm bowling in. alley. I'm You're in. just like, ah, I was right. <laughs> That's Crimson cool. Pear. I guess like you can get that kind of like an essence of pear. I don't like, know if get I get a lot the of the pear. I, I get citrus for sure. I for get sure. the vanilla. I get the oak and the kind of smokiness from the mesquite, the spiciness for sure. The caramel and spice in the end oh, totally falls in line. Totally. I think yeah. I suddenly smell the pear just from hearing the word. Wow. Shut up, Anthony. Dude, that's how it works, man. It, it activates those, those freaking like neural pathways. I think overall, they're, they're right out as well about the, the, the floral taste. I feel like it's almost like a bouquet at the very I can top. see that. It does have floral notes to it. It's uh, so the way I would, the way I would put that for the average consumer is the Russell's Reserve and the Wild Turkey Single Barrel have dark flavors, and so they have like a chocolatey, dark fruit, like almost plum vibe to them, and this has a brighter flavor, mm. and so it has that floral pear citrusy vibe to it and i definitely see how how that would be the case is there it, a single barrel version of this i hope so but i not that i saw because if there's a single barrel select or a single barrel of this sign yeah, me the I'm, f up you know what i'm saying I mean, you know that'd, be, that'd be insanely cool. Uh, uh, 42 it's... bucks, man. Wow. Not bad, man. Yeah, that's not bad at all. That's, that's really solid. good. That's solid. This is definitely something that I would love to just like always have of it, have at home. Agreed. Agreed. I think this is like a this instead of tur wild turkey 101 would be my staple wild turkey product. Now, good. the wild yeah. turkey 101 is like 15, 20 bucks. So it's super cheap. But oh, no, 30, 31, 31 here, uh, the 101 on whatever is 31. that is, it's 29 on this, um, mini bar delivery site where, where the wild Turkey long branch is 42. I see it. The total wine near me is doing the 101 for $22. You have an insane deal going on. Okay. Oh, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Must be. I no, mean, there's the wild turkey bourbon by itself here for 23. This is some random delivery service that I've never heard of, though. So I, see, I, I, see. I don't know. Shady. I'm surprised they're not on like Sealbox, or are they on Sealbox and they just don't tell us? And we'll have to do the suite where we kind of go through some of the wild turkeys. Uh, 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 the um, wild turkey is just overall one of my favorite distillers. They they do a great job. I love their master distiller collections master's keep yeah the master's keep stuff is all really that good that i've tried gorgeous yeah. they just released a rye i know and the new the new master's distill master's keep wild turkey i haven't gotten my hands on it yet but i've been wanting to um wild turkey also has a 12 year old 101 proof distiller's reserve that i've really been wanting to try um, that isn't too crazy on the price. Who the rare breed? The rare breed is actually uh, they come in different bottles. The single barrel uses the same bottle. Mm -hmm. They have the rare breed rye and the rare breed bourbon. Both are phenomenal. You're paying a difference? little bit more, but they're okay. kind of in the similar vein. What about the Kentucky Spirit? The Kentucky that Spirit. Yeah. I don't know if I know that one. It's a iconic bur bourbon from a single barrel. Hmm. Might be good. Might be good. I mean, well, all of the wild turkey stuff is really good. 
the, definitely got me interested interested in wild turkey. I always felt like it was like an old man kind of like unapproachable bourbon to me because I felt like it was maybe a little staunchy. I was wrong, dead wrong. This is fantastic. You know, it took me this long to remember that I've encountered a wild turkey while walking the dogs mm. in the mountains. And <laughs> that thing got so startled, it ran, jumped, flapped its wings so loud, like the loudest flapping you've ever heard. And then it glided from one part of the mountain across like a big divot to the other. And I was like, a holy valley. crap, not a valley. No, because it's like if you've got, you know, a mountain face here, right? And maybe mm-hmm. it curves like my hands here. Mm-hmm. And then this one's also sticking out. And then they join uh, down there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it like jumped up and then f- glided, not flew, glided like. 500 feet to the other side and i was like that's cool that's a good way to escape a situation (laughs) wild turkeys man that was nuts it was huge huge (laughs) you know the craziest thing living in the mountains is how often i see bald eagles now that's actually that's great to hear honestly because they were and monarchs monarch butterflies in a Really? Yeah. Yes. I saw two monarch butterflies animals, <laughs> all day on Saturday. We're building fences and all day on Saturday, there's two monarchs that keep on chasing each other around. They're definitely friends and it's just the That's cutest adorable. thing ever. Aren't monarchs supposed to be, aren't monarch bur- butterflies supposed to be like spirits from the afterlife or something like that in like some, hmm. some kind of... Uh, Who's visiting me? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. It's either, but, it's either monarch bur- butterflies or ladybugs or something like that. But dude, the, hmm. the coolest thing was when we were driving into town, we're crossing a big bridge over the river and in front of us, like almost eye level, bald eagle soars right across like a hundred feet in front of us as we're coming up to the bridge because it's Damn. following the river and it was huge and magnificent. I was just like, what are the chances of seeing that? <laughs> <laughs> so cool. The chance. So cool. But yeah, you know, uh, did we miss anything about the the burbs? I think, um, dude, that thing is awesome. Is this uh, Very one of the excited about it's this. a great, great whiskey? Honestly, yeah, like, I mean, so just solid. Please, I, like w- daily, obviously a daily driver. Obviously a daily up. driver. It's a, it's a five across the board from it's us, which is our board. daily driver one. For the price, this will be hard to beat. Here's the bottle again, Matthew McConaughey. Great job on a wonderful whiskey. Oh yeah. So, well done. All right, all right, again, all right. Bastard. But yeah, welcome to the you know Tap Haven podcast where we occasionally talk about video games. Yeah. <laughs> so so Nat, what have you what have you been playing this week? Because I have a feeling that Anthony and I are, are single minded in our playing experience. Actually, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Shh. I've been playing Shame, the game of Shame. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, I haven't been playing anything. Uh, it's actually been the reason why I've been considering the uh, building of a new PC, because as much as I love my the current PC I have, please do not die. Um, yeah, it's just time to actually like build something that's going to be future proof rather than something that's going to be good for like right now. I have the I have the funds and savings to go ahead and pull the trigger on something that's at least 2K. So that's more than enough, I feel, to go ahead and get me towards uh, being future proofed. I might talk to you guys afterwards to go ahead and just get. <laughs> I know. I, I just changed that. Just a screen. Request. Y'all can see that? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure the stream will be able to see that, too. Oh, God. Yes. The, it did update. Keep... I see the stream over here. Sorry, I was moving my mouse around while Nat was talking because my ADHD is so bad. Bastard. And then it highlighted the name thing. And I was like, wait. And it says add title. And I'm like, oh, oh man, here we go. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just couldn't so help So good. It. So good. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I just I, I'll probably be talking to one or both of you after this to try and figure out what parts I actually want to zero in on. Um, I am 
prioritizing aesthetics, obviously, for this build, but I also want to make sure that I can actually play the games that everybody is starting to warm up to starting to play, like No Rest for the Wicked, which my PC can definitely not run. Um, I couldn't even look at Elden Ring, and my or else my PC would probably crash. Like, I want to be at least to the point where I could run a game for the next 10 years. Nice. Yeah, that'll be that'll be dope. You have a you have a a micro center, right? Yes. Okay. That is huge. Yeah, I was gonna say the big thing for you right now because this helped me a lot. Abundance. I bought the two thousand series right mm-hmm. months before the three thousand series came out, uh-huh. but I was keeping an eye on micro center and I got it open box, Ooh. so I got it for like somewhere between three and five hundred dollars off. And so even though the 3000 series is way better and it came out, I was able to be like, every time I was like sad about it, I was like, no, you actually got a good deal. You didn't pay MSRP. You didn't like pay MSRP, which is huge. Y- yeah. So I would, I'm kind of feeling that for you too, because the 40 series has been out for a while and I feel like the 50 series has to be around the corner. And I don't want you to, <laughs> I'm looking to experience I'm looking at, that. I'm honestly looking at 4070 because from what I've heard, mm-hmm. It's the best bang for buck. Okay. As well as like. Usually is. Yeah. It's very. It's like it hits the even little medium of like having enough display ports where you could do whatever it is that you want to do for your streaming or whatever. And then also just it can handle whatever you throw at it for. God, a fraction. So I'm doing I'm doing the 4070 super. I got to tell you. Okay. That's even better than what I just Googled. So I have the 2080 Ti, right? Mm-hmm. And I just did a quick search. The 4070, non-super, 40% faster than what I have. And what I have is still fucking great. Like I, Oh, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I'm still having a great time with every game. I want, I want like, to be set up so that whenever this kid shows up, which n- not pregnant yet, so just chill out. But uh, if and when this baby show uh, shows up, I want to be able to get to a point where they're they whenever they take a nap i can play like something to Mm -hmm. keep myself to keep myself like awake or something oh my gosh so b b sent me a reel the other day and was like this is gonna be us three when (laughs) when we have kids there's an attachment you can buy where it goes onto your desk and it's a little baby bed seat thing it sits on your desk and the reel is of this baby like sitting there, like just looking at the screen and like looking at the father as he's dude, playing games ah, dude. on his dude. on his, at his desk. And it's got like all the stuff the baby needs. It, it has little attachments for like toys and stuff. And they can yeah. even buy like computer ones. The so, farthest I can keep my child from a screen for as long as possible, the more the, the, is the most I'll do. Like, no, nah, man, they're facing this against. way. They're facing this way. That's fair. They, don't, they don't see That's the screen, fair. dude. I feel like almost everybody has to have seen the Linus Tech Tips, like AMD or Intel upgrade for their employees, where they get five thousand dollars to spend on stuff. I didn't there was that. one that I was so happy to see, where uh, I think the wife of the guy getting upgraded was in some B roll because she got upgrades too. Like they both got an upgrade, and they had like a couple's setup. She's gaming, he's gaming, and the baby is on her like chest while she's gaming. Like she's just oh, like fantastic. Like there's no excuse. You can still game if you have a baby. Like <laughs> get out of here, get out of here. Now I was gonna say like I bet a Steam Deck is really great because you can bring that with yeah. the baby anywhere. But I mean, she was at a full setup at her desk, baby, and in, in like you don't need you don't need your hands. Just lay there. You just gotta, <laughs> just gotta lean back. You just gotta lean you know? back. It'll be fine. Lean back a little bit, or It'll wear one of those cocoon things, those baby cocoons. Baby cocoons. cocoons. Oh I don't God. know what they're called, but they look like yeah, you put your baby in a. Cocoon. I know. I know exactly what you're talking what about, you but talking like I don't. About. I don't know. What they're Dude, there was this either. weird thing the other day. We were out drink. Not we we're out eating at, at, at like a bar, I guess. So that's why I was thinking drinking. Um, but I saw this dude and his wife's dog. And another dog and they're interacting and it took me like 30 minutes to notice that the dad was a dad that had a baby attached to him 
on what looked to me like a backpack he was wearing on the front. And I was just like, I didn't realize it wasn't a backpack. It was almost like tactical looking or something. And no, there was a baby there the whole time. I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> Whoops. How did gosh, I miss that? <laughs> darn it, my friend. It was brilliant. Gosh, darn it. But yeah, so games, the games I've played, um, I don't remember why, but I booted up Star Citizen. I had a pretty good time, pretty good time playing I it. I have things day. to talk about for Star Citizen. This is Ooh, hilarious. You jump into well, Star I'm Citizen. gonna shut up about it until it's your turn then. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna talk about the gameplay. I got one totally more thing. Different. I got one more go. thing, guys. One, okay, one more go thing. for it. Go Did for it. Did you guys watch the Summer Fest game show? Game Game Fest. The Sonar mm. Fest? Was that this weekend? Summer. Summer. <laughs> Was it this week? Summer no, Fest. Uh, I I I did not. I was Okay. Yeah. So Xbox, Microsoft showed up and like literally said, "Y'all better duck cuz I'm about to turn left." Oh my god. <laughs> uh, uh, they had a bunch of stuff that they announced, a, a lot of like uh, a lot of great looking games, honestly. Um but at the very end, and this is just special for me, so this is why I'm sharing it. Um, they teased a prequel to Ge- Ge- uh, Gears of War. Wow. I have I have loved Gears of War since Jump. It is like one of the earliest memories of like next gen consoles that I have across the board. You know I, that was my uh, graduation thesis, essentially. Was really? Gears of War? Yeah, I redid the music for Gears of War inside the engine. Yeah. That's insane. You were you were able to um, you're able to download the Unreal Engine that yeah. is used by Gears of War specifically for That's the mod so pack, and so you're able to go into the mod pack and change all of the sounds and music. So my <sighs> final project for college was essentially redoing the music for. Years of War. That's, that's so sick. So, uh, yeah, it's a uh, prequel. It's called E-Day. Uh, and for those of you who have played the game, E-Day is, is to, E stands for emergence and it's emergence day. So all these creatures come out from the ground and we pick up this story in Gears of War after like years after E-Day with these two characters, Marcus and... Um, uh, oh, Cerulius. Dom. No, Marcus and Dom. Yeah, Dom. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And they are the they are like the quintessential duo, like good cop, bad cop kind of vibe. And the voice actor for Marcus is the graveliest, like just down, tr- d- down bad, just grittiest voice you've ever heard. So, like when I heard that they were doing a prequel and i saw the the trailer i i got like a little emotional i was like oh they're they're coming back because uh-huh. if you've played the game you already know what happens but like you're it is one of those games where i'm very excited to get back into the story of this and enjoy it because i like four and five were meh and i don't know if you've played them but they were pretty freaking meh like the open world concept was just not it was it was not it so first one was fact, it, it's one of those cases like halo one and halo two where sure. the first two were it, it really isn't in my opinion that the later ones are quote unquote bad it's that the first two are staples that defined an industry mm-hmm. and there's no way you can match that level or you can't the, the time again. period yeah. Right. Yeah. And it, it's just you can't capture the whole situation. You can't yeah. capture lightning in a bottle. Yeah. And yeah. so the later versions of all of these classics, it they don't get to retouch that gold. No. You know? And no. it's just an interesting thing. Yeah. It's, it, but it's it's super cool that they're coming back. Um, I'm not expecting any innovation. I would honestly love for them to go back and do like some of the some of the just like the basic stuff that they did really well from the first few games. That was my little share thing because it was like it was old. It was young Nat showing up behind me, going, 
oh my god, it's happening again. And I was like, get back there. I hope they give it the Doom treatment, you know? Oh, and they came out with a new Doom, too. Oh, did that, yeah. really? There's that we're getting a Doom three. We're getting a get, we're getting a Doom three, and it looks. Well, you're so the bad guy good. this time. It just looks so good. Did, no, I, I don't did know I hear that right? Actual, I don't know if it's. I, I heard that you're not the good guy this. You're time. not the Doom Slayer. You're not a. You're not the good. Are you not guy. the Doom Slayer? Let's see. Doom the Dark That's Ages. That's what I heard. It, it's Doom the Dark Ages is the game. Because I, I saw the game, I saw footage of you throwing a shield that was like a chainsaw, and I saw a you, fucking you have gun. to you have to play as the Doom Slayer. You definitely yeah. have the Doom Slayer armor. I mean, Doom is just so good. It is the classic. That is how every game should be like redone. Because it captured what was so perfect about the beginning, uh, the the old series. For sure. And translated it to new systems. And essentially yeah. said, what is the old game about? Killing cool. monsters in that. the coolest, badass way possible. Let's How do we do that. that in a new system? Let's do that. That's all we care about. Story? Screw it. Don't Everything care. else? Screw it cool badass moments in that's all we need this trailer for <laughs> the dark ages looks dope by the way yeah uh there's a gun where you put a skull into a mulcher oh my gosh i saw and that that and that's the freaking ammo for the gun yes. i was like bro dude sign me the f up <laughs> doom doom is just so perfect Every every time it's just they nailed the aesthetic, man. What yeah. can we say, right? It's Ugh. it's gonna be a good time there, boys. I am so hyped. So yeah, they announced a ton of stuff during that Summerfest. I would give it a shot and look at look at it. Uh I was gonna try and play Diablo uh four, but um I have no idea what's actually happening. So you know, there's a You'll have, there's a secret cow level that people still haven't figured out how to get into. Yeah, I've heard about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, nice. Anthony told us last last episode. Yeah, I think I heard about it. I heard about it, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna look for it. I uh, I think I, the I, only I, thing that gets me about Diablo Four is that we're getting so much Path of Exile Two there it is. knowledge right oh! now, dude. That thing looks so good. It, <laughs> it's grinding the skull. And then he throws the chainsaw so freaking shield. So good. Anthony's like, I was looking away. Darn it. What? Gotta... Yeah, dude. Look at this. He's... You put in the skull and it grinds what? it. It grinds it through. That's, That's hilarious. So freaking good. metal, dude. So oh. dope. So... And he throws the shield, kills it, auto kill. Ah, oh, so oh. good. Plasma. I think you can block bullets. I'm excited. Yeah. Doom, man, it's gonna the be new Doom time. games are some of my favorite uh, like a first person shooter just fun games they're just so much fun the um Damn. but yeah i think diablo 4 the only problem for me is that we're getting all of this awesome path of exile 2 uh knowledge now they're releasing all these trailers they're getting the beta ready they're like here's what you're going to be playing they're showing us in-game footage of multiple levels and i'm like all of this is so cool and what I wanted from something like Diablo 4. And Diablo 4 is more approachable. It'll have a bigger audience. Like Path of Exile is never going to be as big as Diablo, obviously. But Correct. at the same time, the amount of depth and care that they're putting into Path of Exile 2 for like the gun mechanics are so dope. Like, I am, I Eric, am I can, I can, Eric, I can summarize the fact that that series is so hype, and the fact that I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, I am the, I am the layman gamer. Here's the I thing, though. No I, I think about. Path of Exile Two has the opportunity to win Pop you over because sure. they took the systems that were overly tedious and sum them up into more approachable mechanics to take away complexity but not take away the choices 
Mm -hmm. So now, instead of trying to build some random rune gem chain, it's instead like giving you those as options still. And your your the amount of flexibility and choices you have does not diminish or go down at all. But you get an easier interaction with the mechanics. The talent tree is easier to like navigate and work through, right? Your choices become clearer but you don't lose choices. But I will say the new classes look so cool, but they added the, I think it already passed. It was the duelist. One of them shoots guns and the guns look so good. I don't know. Just watching this preview for Path of Exile 2 right now. If I don't have a decent gap between playing V Rising and a game like this, I'm going to be feeling so slow and so it's going to feel so hard to move through the world. I'm just going to be annoyed. I mean, that's fair. I, I think like they're just different play just styles, watching it. Right. It's different play style, but like I'm convinced that the way V Rising is doing it is a better way to do it i think they're different like this game isn't trying to be as action oriented it's definitely meant to be more of a tactical builder you're building a toolkit and then that toolkit executes better and better as you collect better and better items and as you go through the game and it's so satisfying that your input has this intense and exponentially more powerful output. I'm not saying that one couldn't enjoy V Rising more because I definitely see how the interactivity of the combat is so fun in V Rising. But I also think there is something so satisfying about planning a, a build and seeing it just become so powerful and so much fun to just execute and demolish things in Path of Exile that I don't think V Rising does that same sort of power pop-off feeling. Like, it's definitely, like, very fun to interact with V Rising. That combat mechanic is also one of my favorites. And so I don't think I could argue that, like, one is more fun than the other, but I think they give different payoffs in different ways. And I could see how some people will like, like for me, I love both of them totally differently, but I could see how one per like different people would choose one over the other because they offer different payoffs in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, it's like very different focuses. Yeah. I am the person that wants to drive the car as fast as possible with as much intricate control as I can possibly get out of the vehicle while what you're describing about the path of exile sounds like the person that wants to work on the car and fine tune the car and perfect each little thing that you don't see and maybe not even feel necessarily, but you understand how it's working yeah. and, and it works in a certain specific way. It might not be the fastest thing in the world, but it's still, it's still a car. Yeah. You know, and and it doesn't break. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> that's a like that's that. a great analogy know. because you, then you, you you like you go through Path of Exile your first time and you build like a Mazda Miata and you're like, "Ah, it worked well, but you know, it was missing a top and it had all these problems." And then you play it a few more times and you're like, "I got the Ferrari now." You know? And you go through and when your build pops off, you're hitting 260 on a straightaway, you know? And, and I definitely think that analogy works really well is that there, the different play styles are driving the car versus building the car because in Path of Exile, there's less of that twitch reaction and more of, I set this build up so that when I press these buttons together, they execute at their fullest capability and I get to see that happen and how it works. Whereas V Rising, everybody could be using the exact same build, but it's the execution of that build that makes the difference in how it feels to play. Yeah. But but it is cool. I, I'm super excited for Path of Exile too. I, I, 
I've, I sunk a ton of hours into the first one. I think it's my favorite Diablo-esque, um, finished Diablo-esque game that is truly like Diablo. I, I think V Rising is a good corollary, but I think V Rising is so different to me, and I come at V Rising in a different mindset than I think Anthony does, for sure. A different mindset, sense, he says. <laughs> yeah, in the sense that I come at it from more of where they that studio came from than like where that and and where the games that they built came from, rather than where they've kind of ended up. Um, but I don't really see it as a corollary or a similar game to Diablo. Like it doesn't feed the same parts of my brain that Diablo games do. Whereas Path of Exile feeds the same areas of the brain that Diablo 2 did for me back in, you know. I hear you. Well, for me, yeah, for me, it's like Diablo 2 has training wheels on and V Rising is what Diablo 2 could have been or could have become without the training wheels and you get to go full speed now and it's amazing. Yeah. I know. I definitely see uh, how I I see that connection for sure. It's just in my, in my brain, if I'm thinking about like new games, path of exile (laughs) essentially made it so that you can customize your training wheels with jet engines and you can do all kinds of crazy stuff that on the same type of system that Diablo did. And V Rising was like, no, I'm going to change the combat system I mean, in such a way that it's entirely different. I think it's one of the reasons that in Diablo 2, the teleport builds are just so popular because mm-hmm. that's the biggest hindrance in Diablo 2. It's slow to move. Yep. Yeah. And that's annoying. Yeah. Well, and the, the same fun. thing is true for Path mm-hmm. of Exile. Uh, as well a lot of the really popular builds are focused around movement mechanics that are really fast the the flicker strike build is extremely popular in the sense that the flicker strike allows you to teleport behind an enemy and backstab them and you build your entire build such that flicker strike is how you move and so you get longer and longer ranges you get different procs off of it Flicker strike can proc more flicker strikes, all kinds of stuff. And now you yeah. press flicker strike down and you start teleporting in between all the enemies on your screen until they're all dead type of deal. That's one of those weird things that would happen in Diablo 2 where it's like it's both satisfying and dissatisfying when you kill the enemies that you didn't even get to see because they're still off screen, but you already slayed them. Then you yeah. walk over there and you're like, oh, look, there's loot. And it's like, okay. Yeah, I mean, I truly think it is one of the satisfying thing about those styles of games now is people who like building things rather than executing things. Um, because I, 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 for example, I don't think V Rising gives you as many tools to build with. So it doesn't activate all the same parts of the brain that building something in Path of Exile 2 can. And so... I think in the future, something that would be amazing is something that bridges that gap between the two, right? Mm, Like giving the capability for for both the building tools of a combat mechanic while also having combat that is more visceral like V Rising is. And uh, that is going to be an exciting uh, future for gaming, in my opinion, because I, I think for me, I love both of them almost equally, right? Mm. I think I'm in a different mood for different ones at different times. And so like, sometimes I'm like, oh man, I want this visceral combat of you rising. It's just wonderful. It's my favorite type of combat. I've played every game that has had a combat style like V rising. I have played for over a thousand hours, right? I have over a thousand hours in battle, right? I have over a thousand hours in smash muck champions, right? Like V rising. I'm probably going to have over a thousand hours in because I love that combat style so much. But I also like the act of just building these intricate, cool, fun, like totally different builds and then watching them just be yeah. awesome. Yeah, man. You know? That's what I want. And that's also I cool. Mulch so, stuff. Yeah. So the game that goes <laughs> through and really offers both of those in a combined experience is going to be just a wonderful day for me. 
You know? For sure. I want to see a V Rising style game that's a shooter, like a sci fi game. Yeah, I, I really, uh, yeah, I, I would love to agenda. see that. Too. I feel like the first Hell Divers actually did that to some degree. Oh, you know? I should go play that sometime. Yeah. Um, the first Hell Divers, mm. and like, it's obviously not one to one, but that's the kind of gameplay that you're looking at. Um, mm -hmm. it plays similarly to something like V Rising. You're looking top down at a character or pseudo top down, and you have different guns you can equip and different builds you can do, and then you call different stratagems. Picture Hell, I mean, really, picture, um, uh, Hell Risers, uh, too, but top down in V Rising control format, and you have, you know, pretty close. And in a lot mm. of ways, I enjoyed that more than. But I, I don't know. They they chose to go the third person shooter route, which I think is the more approachable route, honestly, for the market. But yeah, I mean, for shooters, first person makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's hard not to. Agreed. Agreed. I don't know, man. So so. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anthony, what have what have you been playing? Yeah, yeah. So we'll get back to Star Citizen, I guess, later. Uh, uh, and then, of course, I played a, some V Rising, not as much V Rising as I would like. Uh, my wife is very much missing V Rising, and so am I. Um, I got to play some with Eric, and that was really great. Um, we got to play some against some really cool bosses, some really tedious bosses, some really challenging bosses. Uh, it was fun. It was neat. Um, Got to see a lot of things I haven't your, seen before. What was your most tedious boss there, bud? For me, definitely for Eric, because he got screwed by all the mutants, was the one that was like a mech dude in like oh, the swampy Ingram, Ingram area. Ingram. Yeah, the one with the, <laughs> the chaos, the chaos nah. orbs that like shoots out. Listen was... to this shit. I cannot tell you. Like, <laughs> I have beaten this boss like eight times now and yeah. this particular run when i was playing with anthony everything that went wrong could go wrong <laughs> i ultied a string off of one of those tent uh, uh, tents the and it didn't hit him at all <laughs> while that ulti is going off i get jumped by a pack of mutants like the, the there were numerous times where i wasted my e into his shield Many of the times I would cast my Q for longbow, which does the multi shot. Yeah. I'm really close to him. And then after I press Q, he decides to shield. Yep. And then I get body get because body. all of yeah. the things hit me because I'm so close. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just such an unlucky. And a lot of people are going to be like, hey, 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 just get good. Just get good. Yeah. I, I've beaten I this guy so thing. many times. This is not the case. Like I was so unlucky. It was, it's not even funny. And oh my gosh. I, I, I don't know what happened. It was wild. How unlucky Dude, that was. happened. My favorite boss that we fought was the first one, I think. And it was the spider boss. Oh yeah. And yeah. I'm just constantly dealing oh, with yeah. baby spiders and ads Dude, fighting them. Bad right. In that fight. Yeah. And then all of a sudden Eric goes, he's down. And I'm like, wait, what <laughs> the boss is down what did you do <laughs> like, like I, I was like i thought we were like a quarter of the way through like i haven't even yeah, gone over there to say hello yet you just you I killed him no, <laughs> and he's yeah. like he's like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah he's dead. it's been he's a while dead. you're like you like you didn't realize how long the game had been going i was like i dude it's just been non-stop ads man. yeah and Dude, it's, it's really so bad many in ads. that fight. <laughs> For sure. It's really bad in that fight because if yeah. you're not, if you don't, I don't know how you can take care of it as a single player other than like cheesing it and killing some of the egg sacs and then resetting the fight. So on it, on normal, yeah. I feel like it's pretty easy, especially if you have the longbow. You essentially uh, mix between the longbow Q to the multi shot on the longbow. And then you have a number of options for your E, but if you have the slashers, you get the invis with the stun. 
And so now you have an ability to move you around, make yourself invisible for a second and stun something for a second. Mm. And the multi-shot on the bow allows you to get damage on all of the ads. That essentially gives you two abilities to kind of run around. Destroy everything. Stun and around. AOE yeah. stuff. On normal, you don't even need the the eggs. That that straddle work totally fine. On brutal, just bad. On brutal, <laughs> I actually like to clear the eggs because the <laughs> the spawns alone just to have so much health that the Q on the longbow, especially if you do it at the level that you're supposed, you're supposed to be. To. Mm -hmm. Like for example, on the the brutal servo server that I did it on, you're supposed to be about four levels behind. It's a plus four on the level. Uh -huh. So you're supposed to be four levels under whatever you're fighting. At four levels under on the spider boss, your Q for, or any of your AOE abilities that are good for dealing with adds, just don't deal enough damage to get all of the adds down yeah. before she spawns the next adds. Ooh. And then if you add in, that she's constantly destroying the eggs and more spiders are coming out and you're like, well, get out of here, right? It's a nightmare. So for Brutal, I I kill as many of the eggs that I can without aggroing her. And then I, I try to kill some more eggs and maybe de-aggro her once or twice until there's only like a few eggs maybe in the room. And then I'll do it. It just makes it so much easier because you don't get the random ads. The other thing is the eggs have a random chance for what mob they spawn. Oof. Sometimes you get screwed. And sometimes right. you can get really bad rolls on which spiders spawn comparatively to the spiders that she spawns, which have like a set thing that she spawns, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is much easier to deal with. So. Oof. Ugh. Mm -hmm. I remember doing that fight and like I think we hit critical mass and I was like, "What is happening?" Yeah, and we were and we were over level for the fight. I was like, "Yeah, ah! oh, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> there are so spiders. many spiders, and yeah. yeah that 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 fights that fight can get pretty crazy. It isn't as crazy as the witch fight though, in my opinion. The witch fight's insane. Dude, this, the witch fight. Well, we were under level for that, but I I think we could have done better with it now. Yeah. The one that turns you into a lamb. Yeah. Yeah. Eric made me do that one. I, I yeah, was I was under leveled. Yeah. Well, he made me do it while I was under leveled, and then eventually he was like, "Okay, yeah, maybe we should give you some I stuff." See, I see. Yeah. Nat was like five levels under Anthony when I tried to make him do it. He was like twelve levels under. <laughs> yeah, dude. That that yeah. fight's pretty rough. That fight is that super fight is... engaging and fun, but it is so there are a number of mechanics in v rising that i absolutely love and i think one of the downsides is of the game in general is that there are only a few instances in which certain mechanics are utilized and kind of forced upon you and you have to kind of come to the solution yourself a good example of this is the doctor fight which we've all done um the doctor fights pretty in cool. the uh in the cage yeah so you're in a cage and this is a, sh a doctor with lightning abilities. And about 50% way, 50 of the way through the fight, he starts to activate a move where he teleports to the middle of the room and he does sh shock waves that push you towards the edge of the room. The edge of the room has a electrical fence on it. If you touch that electrical fence, you take damage. And he's a constantly pushing you into it. Yeah, and he take, it takes yeah. a lot of damage. On Brutal... You die if you touch the edge. Period. Yeah. Like, if you touch the edge, you, you die. There's just no way. Sense. So, that fight is the first fight in the game on normal, I should say. Uh, on brutal, it's a little bit different. There are a few fights that kind of force this upon you. But on normal, this is the first fight where you actually have to use a movement ability that is not your dash. Because you have to use a movement ability on one of your weapons or you hit the wall. There is just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you only use your your dash ability, you can't do it. You cannot stop yourself from touching do, the wall. You can do Wraith Spear. 
again a a an an ability yeah, yeah, a yeah, skill sure. or sure. a you have to build you have to skill yes into you have to do something else besides dodge so the entirety of the game says you have a dodge use your dodge to get out of said ability this mm -hmm. fight says your dodge isn't enough figure it mm -hmm. out that's really cool I yeah, I think it's kind of underselling the game that that happens so late into the game mm, for me. That's fair. I would love to see more of these interesting abilities kind of exist within the world. And in Brutal, there are a few cases where having that extra movement ability helps, but it isn't a requirement until that fight. And there are a few other things that I've noticed now on like, because now I've started up a number of servers. Um, but there are a number of things where I'm like, I, the potential for this game is so insane, in, insanely high. And I, I want to see more and more bosses, mods, game modes. I just started a new server that is using the Bloodcraft mod, where you don't gear up to level up, you kill things to level up, similar Let's to a go. normal yeah. RPG. So that's what I'm talking about. So, for example, you can't just like go and get gear and level up. You actually have to like kill and farm mobs for a second and farm some stuff and kill things. Not only yes. that, you have weapon proficiencies. So the more you use one weapon, the better you get at it, right? Oh, cool. So, okay. and, and they have that server that you can just join it, and it's all of the bosses are brutal. It's a pretty hard server because assume. you start off at level zero, and it takes you a second to get to level like two, and everything's level 10 at the start. So you're like, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> even, even if you have like Can reinforced bone. Yeah, because even if you're reinforced force born uh reinforced bone armored up, it doesn't matter. You could still be level two. Damn. Right? And so fighting the first wolf boss is like, holy crap, this guy's That's hard. A big jump. Because That's now huge. by the time you want to fight the wolf boss, there is no way you aren't still level eight or level nine, right? And yeah, so he is by ads. Every boss is going to be read to you. Yeah, man. You know, what would be so cool is if a game of this style comes out to basically be World of Warcraft. And when you go to raid, instead of every single person having to focus on the boss and you can't see anything happening because you've got 25 spells going at them at the same time you legitimately have to split up and have like seven different battles going on in the boss room because the ads are that important. And, you know, you've got like the main tank and the main DPS and the main healer trying to take the boss down while everybody else has their own battle that you could see. But, you know, it kind of balances the idea of like, Everyone's just spamming this guy and you can't even see what's happening because that, that's kind of a problem, I right? Think there's, I think there's merit to that kind of fight. I think that the amount of times that you can pull that gambit and it still feel uh, authentic without having some serious, like seriously cool gimmicks to the fight is going to be few and far between. <laughs> Like I would, I, I I think that's a great idea. I would love mm -hmm. to have that in every single uh, boss fight I'm ever in, in terms of like a multiplayer game. I would love mm -hmm. for every single one where like you have to have multiple people to you deal know, with the amount of people because you are going to get swamped. You know what it would do too? Mm. We have a problem where there's not enough tanks and not enough healers. Well, guess what? You want to be the person directly fighting the boss? You either have to be the best DPS on our team or you got to be the tank or the healer like you're you know and you it will bring both. more tanks and healers right like mm -hmm. cuz I feel mm. I feel like that's a that is a issue that a lot of MMOs have run into I feel because mm -hmm. again not everybody wants to be a tank or a healer where we are a very rare case in the sense that like that aspect of the game is very 
uh, attractive. Me and Nat mm-hmm. are rare cookies. We're not rare cookies. I feel like we just have we manifest our trauma differently. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, <laughs> I must heal you. I must, I must heal save you. you. I have to save you so I can save myself. My mental health um, requires me to keep you alive. <laughs> For sure. For sure. <laughs> but yeah, but um yeah, it's just it's it's a different uh game style that I wish would be around more i just feel that it's just out of style for some reason and i don't know why like it's an obvious answer for me for like getting me into that style of my that style of game but i i I don't what i'm who am i to talk i don't really play mmos anymore you know to me it's a lack of engagement a lack of like the and this is something that day nine talks about with v rising he's like the engagement of the combat is mm-hmm. so enjoyable. You have it's, to be in it, or it's else you're going to get slapped. Yeah, and it's like, you could have played the game, you can play the game over and over again, and it's just still fun to play. It's like it's like hopping on a, a, a real-world thing. Like, mm-hmm. for some people, it's a car. For some re- people, it's like a pogo stick or a unicycle or whatever. There's a tactileness to it 100 mm, percent. and in world of warcraft unless i mean it, it sorry this is still muted but if you're not playing like a demon hunter or something similar you don't have that much tactileness i think it's, healing's the that, only and, only one in my opinion and mm-hmm. there's not and to be completely honest even if you are a demon hunter there's no fight in the game that's demanding that you use that tactileness other than in pvp yeah. No. In that, in other that other than I, I would say PvP and um, um, uh, what are they called? Uh, keyed in-game dungeons. Mm-hmm. And I know oh, the, it, um, I'm forgetting the name for mean. them. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Where they have different levels. Like once you get to yeah. the highest level one, you have to you you to. have to press all of your abilities perfectly mm-hmm. for like two and a half hours. You know, it's it's it, there's a lot of tactfulness there, and every week's mm-hmm. different. Yeah. But like a no, big thing is missing. Not everybody's playing at that level, though. No. You know? yeah. Anyway, go but ahead. Anthony. A big thing is missing is like the counter. In V Rising, there's a counter, and you hit a PVE or a PVP person, and boom, you're stunned suddenly. There's stuns in WoW, but not mm-hmm. a stun when you think that you're about to be amazing, mm-hmm. and then you're like, "Fuck! I hit a wall. I'm, I'm am I screwed? I'm am I about to die? And stabbing me in the face? Yeah, yeah. like." That's the, that, that's the greatest. It's, the it's greatest. amazing for some it's reason. It's. I mean, the the MMO that does combat to the level that V Rising does will be the next Guild big Wars. MMO. It will Guild change the genre. Here's the thing. Here's here's what I want to posit. Yeah. The game that did this poorly is in the top twenty MMOs and makes bank every month. Guild Wars Two. I'll be on online. Albion. Oh. Albion Online does League of yeah. Legends gameplay just like V. The, really? It's not good. Yeah. Here's the thing, it's Anthony. Not it's not as good as V Rising. Let's be it's real. Not I'm not. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. It has the mechanics, and just based off of the light mechanics, just it, it, you could essentially call Albion Online V Rising light, right? V Rising for mobile platforms, right? Mute it, don't and let me hear. Even with the lightest implementation of these combat mechanics, it is one of the top MMOs on the market. Right? So the game that takes this idea and actually implements an MMO with V rising level combat mechanics is going to win. Full stop. Mm. It ain't even gonna be close, right? Look at Black Desert Online. Black Desert Online has n- so many bad things about it. So many just super deceitful tactics to get money out of you. There are so many things. But guess what? Black Desert Online is so popular and still so played because it has the most tactical, like p- pressing buttons implementation of an MMO on the market. 
you you have to constantly do things like counters and all this crazy stuff. Because so, of that, it's one of the top MMOs. This this reminds me of one of like the greatest things that a professor at the school I went to said. And it's that um he, in his opinion, games shouldn't have anything story-wise or like you know, like there's certain intricacies that don't matter is what he says, right? And if you look at Sunlock Studios and what they came out with first, what did they come out with first? They were perfecting a game mechanic, right? Yeah. While when I look at Albi Online, I'm looking at like what seems to be people that just were like, we want this type of game. Let's just make that. And they went for it, right? But what the professor that I'm referring to was was trying to get at is that essentially if would you you know you have an arcade machine, right? That must be amazing first. You need the interaction with your game to be amazing. And Sunlock Studios worked on that first with their first two or three games. And now they come out with V Rising and it's like, you know, you can do certain things poorly, but because it's so fun to ride this bike, since it feels so good, it's hard not to like it. And it's hard for them not to be successful and gather a following and potentially keep on going and going and going with it. And yeah. It, for example, if, if a, another way to put it, in, in my opinion, would be if Stunlock Studios copied Albion online bit for bit now that they had the combat mechanic they'd have the best MMO on the market yeah because that would be awesome. Albion online mm. didn't start with that they started with a kickstarter and this Albion online was kind of their first big foray into the games they didn't perfect any piece of it they were just like we love League of Legends and we love RuneScape let's combine those that was literally mm. their goal and they ran into a bunch of problems. Like, I'm not even saying just to, just to kind of backpedal a little bit. I'm not saying that some of the technical advancements and things that happened in Albion Online, because it's been around for like 10 plus years now. There are some things about it that were just like technically masterpieces of work for what they did. 100%. But they had a lot of hard problems to solve and they just weren't equipped to solve them yet. Uh, you know? They, they didn't perfect a combat system first. So then they were like, oh, we got to make a combat system work in an MMO that's tactical like this. We're going to simplify a lot of things to make it work, right? Mm. And so th there were these steps that were logically followed. But if a company like Stunlock Studios was to say, our goal is to make an MMO with the combat we have, they have a lot of tools at their disposal nowadays to be able to solve that. And now with V Rising, they probably have the money to solve. Oh, and look what they've done with making things like customizable, moddable. Yeah. It's like Dota 2 wouldn't, or sorry, Dota wouldn't have occurred if people weren't able to make it from Warcraft 3. Yeah. 100%. And so if the guys, if Stunlock Studio is thinking about what we hope they're thinking about, yeah, it's a great idea to be like, well, if we give the community the tools to make something like that happen and they do it, that's confirmation that people want what we want. Yeah. And they'll go and start play testing certain ideas of their own. And of course, you know, a mod within a game is never going to be the most popular thing in the world. So if they go and make a full on dedicated game to basically that mod, boom, it can become like incredible. Yeah. The next big thing. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in, I, I, uh, I have been playing a ton of V Rising, and uh -huh. the more I play it, the more I want. So, my the only I... the only downsides for the game for the me I... are the, the have, same man. ones that I brought up last week. In the sense that I want them to do so much more as soon as possible to keep the game alive so that all of these expansions can keep happening. 
so that people can be engaged in the game, so that more mods get created, so that in player engagement stays high. Because the more this game gets out, the more this genre will bloom in a quick it's fashion. Alive. I think, it, well, here's the thing. I think League of Legends and Dota have proved that this combat mechanic has staying power, clout, and people want it for long periods of time. That's why V Rising can even exist, right? Like when they initially created the arena system, they were really like when they first created um, Bloodline Champions, which was their first one before Battle Right, their goal was actually just we love League of Legends and Dota. We just don't want to do all the farming stuff. Give them all the abilities, make it an even playing field from a stat perspective, put them in a box and have a 5v5 fight, right? That that was their goal. Dude, you just, you just gave me an incredible idea that might be terrible, right? Okay. But imagine <laughs> okay. you're in V Rising and you are raiding someone's castle. But when raiding, there's the option. Are you trying to plunder or are you trying to conquer? And if you Ooh. try to conquer, take over their castle, guess what? You have now agreed to schedule a fight with these guys. However many there there are. One, two, it's three, four, five. It's, it's 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, 4v4, 5v5, right? And, well, you have to ante up. Because if you lose, they get your castle. You got pink right? slips, yeah. And then they put you in an instant situation at the agreed upon time, right? That everyone can go and fight. Fight. And now maybe there's some sort of interesting arena in between where you're, you know, kind of like League of Legends. You've got the map, right? But now you have your castle, their castle, and the battlegrounds between. And you're trying to push in. They're trying to push back. And eventually you break into their castle or maybe they break into yours. And I know it would be a lot of pain and suffering trying to make this actually fun. <laughs> But it sounds so epic taking that really cool. League of Legends style battle and having like so much more like what is the word? Um you don't want to lose your home. You don't um, <laughs> you know, it's like so much you gotta, you gotta ante up though. It sounds so <laughs> much closer one. to that being a reality too. I, I still stand by my improvements from last week where if we had this meshing server and you could go up to a plot and essentially choose who you want to battle and every castle is an instance of that area rather than a thing then it would be so easy to hook those two instances up with an arena in the middle mm -hmm. or a battleground in the middle or here's the thing what if you don't even have to do all that you put invisible walls on the map and the area in between your two plots of land is the arena. Right? Yeah. Y'all, you know, there's a book that basically does this system or like a system akin to it. And it's a cool book. You guys should check it out. Listeners, if you're listening as well at to this, up to this point in time, there's a book by Kyle Karen. It's a series called The Ripple System. You have you have brought up the Ripple System like I have every week, the, dude. Guy, because it is it is this game system. Yeah, it's I know the idea that you <laughs> throw down and like literally everything that you do affects the world. I mean, and if you want things, you have to ante up. Huh? So That's I, cool. I don't know. Just thought I'd go ahead and suggest it because the first few games is literally like. I think they go through a WoW raid in the first game, oh, in the cool. first book. And I'm like, no, no, second book. Second book is a WoW raid. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. This could be good. And then by like the, I'm on like book seven, book six, book seven, like at this point in time. And it's like a raid. And it's a multi-wing raid. It's so good. I love I, it. I will say it's so, one. It's, it's probably corny, but. One cool thing about Bloodcraft, the server that's doing the RPG, V Rising, mm -hmm. they have dungeons. Yeah, man. I would love to play a dungeon with V-Rising mechanics. They already they, have dungeons? They have a dungeon. It's like a... Um, so so let me uh, look up Bloodcraft V-Rising. There's a trailer. Anthony, if you want to yeah, pull I'll that Yeah, I'll try up. to grab that. 
but you essentially every few hours they spawn a world boss and then it's like every hour is a new event but every other hour they spawn like a a dungeon right this is the mod um i don't know if they have the trailer on this site but they have um they have it on youtube the bloodcraft rpg mod trailer for v rising the trailer came out a month ago um but it is it is it looks really cool i i i'm not high enough level in it to do a thing they also the server does trios trios you yeah say. so we have enough trios is really trios. popular dude there was a there was a um what do you call it a oh my god why am i struggling here it is a vote a poll on that server we were playing and trios is like right up there with like solos and duos. I feel like three is kind of the perfect number for most small group playing groups in yeah, a lot of ways. Hard. Here, do the uh, the volume. Sorry, does sorry, it sorry. Kill the kill the Jesus. listeners. <laughs> what is? Have I, I don't even know if I've seen that place. Whoa. Yeah. So it has you. You fight to gain levels. It, it instead of crafting to get your levels, you, you have the different masteries for each of the weapons. Mm. Um, you get different, th different abilities for the bloodline Last that you cannon. choose. Okay. They have all kinds of new things added. Oh, yeah. I fucking hate that boss. Yeah, Wilfred, <laughs> Wilfred's a beast. Um, this guy sucks. That guy was I insanely hated him hard. So much. Yeah, he was. Oh. He was pretty good. Uh, but they have different hotspots. They have the new world bosses. But I, I, the the they have a new traders that have different things that you get uh, stuff the for. Arena. They have arena fighting in the, in a certain part of the map. They added new arenas so that you can fight over. The new world currency bosses. that they have yeah, yeah, yeah. they have the new Wait, world, like world bosses. War bosses oh new world bosses yeah so, this this, is like so they're bosses. they're oh. a harder version of the boss that they are mm, gotcha 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 that's a lot of barrels then the bourbon barrels barrel battle royale yeah you can all oh, go cool. into and and so these events Around. that they're doing mm -hmm. they occur like every day at different times that's super cool and so you get to go do it. But PD this is the cool one. Castle. They have a dungeon. And the dungeon is this. It's a castle build. And so they build build out a castle. And spawn you in it, essentially. And then you get to go through this castle and do a dungeon. Wow. This and then they raids. have raids. They really should be generating this kind of stuff. Right. Here's the, the 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 crazy thing is, and these raids are like, they're castles built by the people running, uh, like they have blueprints to create these castles. It's crazy, dude. Like this I said at the end of the so last, so cool. Like I said at the end of the last episode, this this is more validation that there are so many people like us who are like, this is the way. And we're going to make it happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. And, and so is happening. this mod, of course, has one server that they're running. Like the people that develop this mod are. Um, they're doing one server, but you can download this mod and create your own server with different rule sets and different things. Mm. And they have a bunch of different options, too. So more people can kind of add on and create and do things with this, which is just amazing. So I am, I'm super excited for that. Uh, I just started, I'm only level nine, so y'all have plenty of time to catch up. I did already create a base though. So join the uh, server of course and you did. join my clan. Of course you did. Hell yeah. Dude, at some point we're going to have to go back and update our podcast and have like, 
you know, Act One, something, Act Two, uh, Hell Divers, Act Three, uh, V Rising. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much where we're at. Different, right? The different phases of our podcast. <laughs> oh my gosh. What's the next phase? Um, what's the next phase. Like, what's the, game on, what's the game on the horizon for every like for y'all? So, so for me, don't go in deep. Just like name I know the next game we're playing is. I know what the next game we're playing. So is. I don't know what the next game we as a collective are playing, I but I know what I'm looking forward to that I'm excited for. That's probably gonna like kill a hundred hours of my time here I don't pretty hear about soon. That. I don't care then. I don't care then. No, keep you keep that to yourself. What? You can you can use that on the next spot where you get to talk about the games that you want to play. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you say so, Nat, I'll go to my corner. I'll cry. I'll put on the little top the the hat with the dunce on it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry man that was mean i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> now you're gonna have to live with your choice i'm not gonna say it now i really am sorry <laughs> he was gonna say dark and darker it's true no it's i out. wasn't gonna it's, say dark or and it's darker. not out but it's available like regularly now. i have wanted to play it i'm just hoping the uh um i, I that is one that i i want to pick up and play i did love the beta of it and i haven't picked it up in a long time um, they have new classes. So that is one that I do want to sit down and play. I've been waiting for us to have a free moment because I, I like playing it alone really doesn't interest me that much, but playing it with y'all does. So I'd love to yeah. like get a threes group and play that one day for sure. Yeah. The main other game that I played was uh, Snow Runner. So there's this weird thing that I think happens to me probably because I grew up playing racing games with like my cousin, my uncle, and then even solo. Is that when I'm like really tired and just so busy doing other things, I'm like, I want to play a game and I try to find a car vehicle game. And Snow Runner is like, I tried finding, there's other games. I was like, maybe Cyberpunk. No, there's too much going on. Maybe this, uh, I don't know. And it's like, Snow Runner isn't a racing game, but you get to drive and it's cool. It's like Dark Souls, but with cars. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's it's pretty neat and now they've got like a north carolina pack and i'm like can i like drive to my house the probably that'd be cool that would be pretty cool <laughs> but yeah but yeah i'm looking forward to dark and darker there's actually another game i was looking forward to called sworn sworn you so you, you uh posted inside the discord Yes, oh, yeah. I was wondering if you saw this, Nat, because I think that I, I actually, when I saw this, I was like, that's the next game we're playing. Let's see if we can get it on screen here. Yeah, it's Swarm kind of like a co-op. Co um, Ooh, they got the, they got the. Yeah, it's a uh, co-op Hades, kind of. Yes. The Hades vibe. Yes, co-op, though. Ooh. Yeah, we could all do it together. Yeah, it's like a co-op Hades. Not going to lie, Hades is. I, I think I that's the the only know. problem is Broke. that it's going to be really hard to match the quality of Hades. Of Hades, yeah. And so yeah. it, I, I have no doubt that a co-op right? version of Hades will be so much fun. But they're, they're going to be battling uphill a little bit in the sense that it's got to be close enough in quality to Hades that it that doesn't actually you don't play the game it. and sit there and say eh, i like this but like why didn't they do that or why didn't they do this it's got to be just good enough to where with the co-op you're like this is co-op hades you know yeah that's what you got to yeah. say when you play it and that's totally possible but that's going to be their their main I, I, thing oh no with. no guys what it says demo steam 10th to 17th does that mean it came down today oh it did it finished today dude you yeah. can download it right now but no, i don't think can... no <laughs> and then it release. oh it releases this year it releases this yeah. year so okay no that's fine right. that's fine we can play it when it is like full yeah, yeah, full yeah, yeah, on. yeah. i this is one where nat has so much hades clout 
that we shouldn't so play it true. in a bad state. We should it's wait until so this is true, like done. Guys. Yeah, I bet they got a ton of feedback this week, and hopefully they've run with it. Yeah, so. it looks honestly, it looks really smooth. Eric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, does, no, no, no. Here's man. the thing. It's I think they people. can do it. From what I'm seeing, I'm I'm not saying. And here's the thing: it doesn't yeah. have to be as good as Hades. It just, it just has to be, be close. close enough to where close. when you play it. You're not thinking about Hades. You're thinking about this is Hades right. yeah. with other people, right? I can see this as a, this is like a merge between uh, Hades and um, Crypt, Crypt of the Elder, uh, the Curse God or whatever. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Curse of the, the Curse of the Mad God. Yeah, is yeah. that it? Because literally, for, it's pretty much Forsworn and this. Yeah, and uh, Hades had a baby. Oh, wait, no, not Forsworn. What's it called? Uh, Raven. Curse of the Dead Gods. Curse Sorry, of the Dead Gods. Not yeah, Mad yeah. Gods. It's Curse it's of the Raven, Dead Gods. It's Raisin, Ravenwatch and Hades had a baby. Yeah. This is it. Curse of the Dead Gods is also really good. That's just unfortunately also single player. Yep. Yep. But the the makers of it came up with um, Raven's Watch, which is also co-op. So if you guys ever wanted to play that. You let me know. Ooh, I don't know if I've done Raven's Watch yet. Is it, it on is Steam? It's not on Steam. Steam. It's on Steam. I'm is it by the right same now. people? It's not by the it's same. By the developer. same people. It's by the same people as Curse of the Curse of the. Uh... No, because that's past tech. I don't see it under their thing. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, past tech. Raven's Watch. Weird. When you click on their develop. Oh. When you click on their developer from Curse of the Dead Gods, I didn't see it. Weird. Oh, I haven't you, I, I haven't done Raven's Watch yet. I'd be totally down to try it out. I love Curse of the Dead it Gods. It is a four player co op. Let's and do it. they have a, quite a few characters. Nice. Little Red Riding Hood, Beowulf, um, Aladdin, the, the Frost Queen, uh, Wukong, yeah. uh, Geppetto. I think that's everybody right now. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I'm for 100%. you, uh, for the audience, yeah, at some point, the three of us would, are hoping to like do uh, streams slash just gaming on like Wednesdays. But with Nat's new job and my new cows and stuff like that, that's that's been kind of challenging. So th- that's so what we want to do someday. <laughs> yeah, we'll, into, we'll, we'll get there. One day. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll put, put, a, put a stick in us, Eric. I think we're done. Yeah, I guess that's a good place to end it. Uh, Mm -hmm. Well, for all those tuning in, thanks for tuning in. This was the first live episode. If you did not catch us live, which is highly unlikely, considering I think we've only had three viewers uh, (laughs) in total, and I think at least one of those was me, and one of those was likely Anthony, and the other one was likely... Ash. Ash. (laughs) Um, Man, I don't know how this stuff works, because like on... I, wait a second. If I go to my Twitch thing, I can probably actually see a number. But whenever you look at like the chat, there's just, like 15 names. Bots. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Right? They're all bots, aren't they? Yeah, they're all tracking they're all, bots. You can you tracking. can filter them. You can filter them out. I used to do that for my Twitch to see the like true viewers. Yeah, but well, so when I go to the dashboard, it says one viewer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the dashboard tells you the real count. Right. The the so bots weird. actually don't open up your stream. They open up your chat, chat. API and stuff like that. So they, oh, so they're like skimming the chat for like yeah. crap. That, oh, that's war- the worst, man. Yeah. It's the worst. But it's for, the worst. You likely didn't catch our live show, but as easy as this was i'll probably be streaming we'll probably be streaming every monday at 7 p.m to about 9 yeah. 9 30 and we'll have the live view of course you i will know. edit these down and publish them and you'll get to see all of these go live on the youtube after the fact but you'll have to wait uh the rest of the week till friday uh that's kind of just our goal at some point, we'll close off the live viewing to subscribers only or some nonsense, and it'll be kind of special. And then everybody will get to see the episodes free on Friday, and some people will get to see it a little bit early, and that'll kind of be a bit of yeah, but You know, you just triggered a neat idea, which is if we were to, like, to tweet out, this is what we're tasting this week. So you can try to oh, get it. Cool. 
and and try to taste it yourself live with us. Yeah, and that then you would could be. comment in the chat how you feel about it while we're spewing nonsense. You know. Yeah, I think once uh, once we start getting some viewers, I'm down for that. Like like uh, viewers for the live show, I'm down for that for sure. Maybe maybe just the tweet will bring them in, man. Yeah, that's fair. I, uh, I get very low Twitter uh, interaction. But I don't know. There's also well, there's also the YouTube thing for like posts. There, I don't think anybody don't gets the works. posts that I post out uh, on post the channel. Out posts? Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, so I don't know how those get updated. YouTube really doesn't do anything. I do post community stuff. Feel free to go find that. I I do uh, post stuff there. Um, I am going to be setting up Instagram. We have the TikToks. We have the, the audibles. We have the, the w- sorry, not the audibles. We have the Spotify, right? Go subscribe there at all the is. cool places. Go into the doobly doo below. Um, subscribe, like, comment, have fun with that. And we will catch you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Peace.